What's up and welcome back to another unboxing review with Gizmo Slip Tech. My name is Brandon and I am super happy to be showing you the Strix G16 uh, from Asus today. This is the new 2023 version and it is clearly one of the very best mid to lower range budget options at three, uh, $13.29 right now. Uh, it is currently on sale and it is, I think, one of the most attractive laptops around that $1,300 price point. Uh, we'll go over a whole bunch of stuff today. So I've got the outline over here. We're gonna unbox the laptop. We're gonna check the laptop power adapter, check quality control of the laptop, do a flex test. We're gonna review the ports, test the keyboard and mouse, test the display, test the speakers, test the fan noise with decibel meter, test the full power CPU benchmarks, test the full power time spy benchmarks, uh, Apex Legends. We're gonna go into our game testing there. We got 10 games if you wanna see the games we're gonna test. And then we're gonna do a final summary of everything at the very end. So we've got a ton of things to do today, and I hope you enjoy this kind of content. Hopefully it helps, is very helpful to you when deciding if this, la is, if this laptop is the laptop for you or not. I am Brandon Baldwin, and I am super excited to take you through this test. I would encourage you to subscribe if you're into these kinds of tech review videos. And of course, if you have any questions about the laptop, please, feel free to ask it in chat. Um, I will try to answer as many questions about the Strix G16 as I can, and I'll try to focus the questions primarily about the Strix G16 and potential competitors right around the price point today. Uh, that way we stay a little bit more on topic. So without further ado, let's get into comparing this laptop against price comparable laptops that are out there. Um, so, here is the laptop list. I have created this list with a, a couple of my help from um, Ellie and Kaylin, and this is a really phenomenal resource, I think, for people out there shopping for a gaming laptop. We have some of the very best deals on the market here at the top. There are obviously other great laptops in the list further down below, but every single gaming laptop that is worth considering buying is on this list, okay? There are specs for the size of the laptop, uh, basic benchmarks for most of the laptop. You got value ratings with uh, CPU performance per dollar, GPU performance per dollar, and there's all kinds of benchmark sources, which uh, if you don't know, benchmark sources will direct you towards full-fledged reviews. Um, there's also pictures of each of the laptops, as well as if I have done a video on the laptop, then that video will also be in here um, as well. So the, you, can, you can watch videos right here uh, inside of the laptop list. Anyway, there's a link in the description down below to checking that out, but I digress. Let's move on to going over the Strix G16 that we're gonna be reviewing today. So this is the Strix G16. Notice the RGB lighting across the, the front here. We've got illuminated RGB keyboard, um, a very nice, Low bezel display, very minimal bezel around this. There is a webcam at the top. Um, and this shows a number pad on the touch screen. I didn't really check to see if that has that or not. I think it does this year. That's kind of nice if it does. Uh, two USB A's on the right side. We got two USB C's on the left with one of those being Thunderbolt, a headset port, HDMI 2.1, an ethernet port, and then our power adapter port. So the ports on this are not that extensive, but they're high quality ports, high performance ports, and they will get the job done for the vast majority of people out there. Now, what are the top competing laptops in this price segment? First of all, we have the Acer Predator Helios 300. This is a previous gen product with an i7-12700H, a very similar processor to what we have in the Strix G16, but it's a previous gen 12th gen. RTX 3070 Ti, that's a higher tier GPU from the previous generation of products. It does not have frame generation, uh, but it comes with a one terabyte SSD and a QHD 240 Hertz display, which is gonna be arguably a higher quality display than the display you're gonna get on the Strix G16. So if you're after something that is a higher quality display and has slightly more raw graphical power, the Acer Predator Helios 300 is a great option to consider. Now, the MSI Pulse 15 also features a QHD 165 Hertz display with 100% P3 color gamut. So very colorful, very vibrant display on the MSI Pulse. Um, I think this is in general a very good buy. 
uh, especially when it's on sale at $12.99, it's $200 off currently. And I think that this laptop is going to be a, a good competitor against the Strix G16. But then we have the Lenovo Lock 16, L-O-Q Lock. We're calling it the Lock. Ryzen 7 7840HS, RTX 4060 in this, 16 gigs of DDR5 5600 memory, one terabyte SSD, and a full HD 144 hertz, 350 nits display. So this is the brightest rated display out of the laptops uh, that we're quickly comparing here. 1139 providing an incredible level of bang for the buck uh, all around. Um, you know, the CPU, Performance per dollars at 1385. The GPU performance is at 957. That is higher than what you're getting with the Strix G16. $8.12 for the GPU performance per dollar with the Strix G16. $15.95 for the CPU performance, which I guess that's even lower. Interesting. Super interesting. Uh, Wow, okay, so the Strix G16 has the highest CPU performance per dollar between these, and that's because this, this new 13th gen um, i7HX processor has those additional E cores on it because it's an HX line of the processor. So it's gonna have a, a far above average CPU performance for your money um, with the Strix G16. I think from a, a raw specs perspective, there's predominantly, I guess the biggest flaw here is that it's not a QHD display, but that's also a great strength because the new RTX 4000 series, 4060s, 3070 Ti's, all of these uh, laptops that we're talking about between these four laptops only have uh, eight gigs of VRAM, which is just not enough for QHD gaming on the newest, latest, greatest modern games. So uh, in a sense, going with a full HD plus display, it will basically allow you to play everything on ultra settings in the vast majority of games without stuttering or issues. Now, some of the games may still stutter or have VRAM problems, but generally speaking, 99.9% .9 of games, you're going to be just fine on the VRAM limitations, at least right now, at full HD+. plus. So, um, a nice thing also about the Strix G16 is it is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio display, which I really like that. If you're into a little bit taller display, a little bit less bezel, especially along here, along the bottom. Um, and Asus did a really good job of, of keeping the laptop of very similar specs uh, in terms of overall size, while adding this additional screen real estate. So I really, really love that. Um, and checking in with chat, let's see here. What's up? Uh, what's up, just a bearded guy? Is there a way to contact you? Uh, it's just my email, it's probably the best thing. Um, if you wanna contact me. Okay, so glad I checked with chat. Let's move into our unboxing phase. Um, I guess, Let's move into our unboxing phase and I'll talk about, I guess, which of those laptops I would personally be buying. So um, I think my top pick between those four laptops is either gonna be the Strix G16 or probably the Acer Predator Helios 300 with a 3070 Ti. Um, because if I recall that one, Oh, that one only comes with 16 gigs of RAM. I thought it came with 32. Interesting. Okay, so um, only 16 gigs. But the, the QHD 240 hertz display is probably what would do it for me in terms of pushing me over the edge to the Acer Predator Helios 300 because I'm predominantly an eSports gamer um, as my main gaming uh, game of choice. And so this would probably be the best eSports gamer out of all of those laptops because it's 240 hertz and it's a QHD resolution display. Uh, so that's probably what I would pick. But if you're like more of a blend gamer, you play all kinds of different games uh, or predominantly single player games, that's where going with the full HD display can just, it can be a real advantage because you don't, you're not gonna have v, uh, VRAM limitations. And out of those, in terms of the best full HD display option, I think the Strix G16 is probably the best, especially since the CPU uh, is clearly kind of in the lead in terms of overall potential performance. At least for your money. Okay, very nice. Um, just a bearded guy, I'm not sure about the duo, uh, but I'm gonna try to keep the questions primarily about the Strix G16 today, if that's all right. Um, okay, so here's the Strix G16. It's a very interesting box, uh, boxing experience, because you've got this like nice 
ROG Strix logo on it. Um, and then you go around the sides, you got this nice art on the back. I think that looks really cool. Um, and then to actually take the laptop out, you open up the top and you want to make sure that you open it the correct way, otherwise the laptop will flop out. But basically, then you just slide this box out, right? So you just pull this right out and shabam, there's the laptop. Now you can pull this down, which gives you access to easily grabbing the laptop. I like that design, it's a pretty cool design choice. Uh, here is the AC adapter. It is a 280 watt power brick. All right. And this 280 watt power brick, uh, I mean, that's a good sign indicating that you're going to be able to pull a ton of wattage through the system, by the way, um, comes with this long power cable. Let's go ahead and see how long these cables are. All right, so this cable is about six feet long, approximately, just a, a hair shy of that. Um, and then the power cable on, connected to the power adapter is about four feet long or so. So that's nice to see as well. Um, so that's a pretty good cable length size uh, that'll get you onto a table and then you can probably put this on the table most of the time and once you get this on the table, you know, you can use the long power cable to get you up there basically. But generally speaking, you're probably not gonna have the power adapter on the floor with the cable going up because it's just not long enough. Um, kind of, it's kind of the way Asus designed it, I guess. All right, so let's see what else is in this box. So not much in the box in general. Looks like we've got some warranty information. So let's go ahead and just take a quick glance through here. In search of incredible warranty card, you can fill this out and send this in, I guess. Um, but you're probably just going to register it digitally anyway. So it's pretty much irrelevant, I think. Yeah, but if you want to learn more about the warranty, there's that right there. All right. Um, Okay, thank you for purchasing an Asus laptop. Register your laptop to receive one year of accidental damage protection and other exclusive benefits. Oh man, that is sweet. So I bought this through the link on the sheet um, over on Amazon. So this does come with one year of free accidental damage protection. That is awesome. So liquid spills, electrical surges, or accidental drops will be covered for the one year um, and you can extend your warranty for another 90 days if you go do a survey it looks like there's also a quick start guide Let's see if I can show you this you can kind of pause it and take a look if you want but it's showing that we have a USB 3.2 gen 2 port USB-C with display port and power delivery, and then a Thunderbolt 4 port. Very nice. That's a very simple box. It doesn't have too much in it. Let's go ahead and move on to checking out the laptop. Huacha. Um, Tony G says that's a surprisingly cool unboxing experience. Yeah. Um, is, is the accidental warranty an international warranty? That's a good question. I'm guessing. It says that you must register with Asus within 60 days of purchase in order to get the accidental protection. It's not saying if it's an international warranty or not. 
on here. You're going to have to probably look that up online for the accidental portion. The regular warranty So if we check out the regular warranty card Okay, says it's a 12 month warranty. Here's the um Here's the bit about the display. If you want to be able to um, return it because of the display or get the display fixed. International warranty support. Um, it's within the covered countries of the Asus Notebook International Warranty. So if you travel from country A to country B and would like to request service in country B, then if A and B are within the countries covered by Asus Notebook International Warranty, then it'll be eligible. If you want to see what countries, go to asus.com slash support or rog.asus.com slash support um, to see. And your procedures will vary by company. Um, if you want to see... Yeah, so you're just going to have to go check out which list of countries are in the international warranty. But yes, essentially, uh, yes, but it will depend on what if your country is is covered, is a covered country or not. Okay. All right. What's up, Madi? Welcome to the stream. All right. So here we are. Taking the plastic wrap off this guy. try to keep all of the uh, plastic wrap and everything in good condition so all right so there's the underside of the laptop we've got our air fan uh, intakes right here you can kind of see through and see some of the heat pipes if you look through the grating um, we've got our serial bar and uh, model number information over here um, it does say ROG or something right here in the letters there's some letters there but you can kind of see inside of the laptop. Pretty nice design on the bottom. This is hard plastic uh, and it's a nice material. I like the material. This up here is metal. So this is a high quality uh, metal top lid. You do have this uh, sticker that's kind of on here and it does easily come off, thankfully, with no residue, no residue here. Um, all right, this has the ROG intelligent cooling, 15 degree lower CPU temps, full surround vents to maximize airflow, tri-fan cooling. So we have a third fan on the inside. We're gonna take a look at that when we take the laptop apart. Uh, this will be uh, truly silent, silent, meaning that there is a truly silent option if you want the laptop to be quiet. Um, basically one of the fan profiles is silent mode and that sets all the power limits so that it doesn't die or overheat, even though there's basically no fans. So um, in terms of a product design, from a product design standpoint, we have the entire rear of the device being fan exhaust. That is uh, a significant change from previous generations because this is now um, a, a more heavily focused laptop on, on your exhaust and cooling and heat dispersion than the previous generation because there was a lot of ports in the back here and there was just two vent fans on each side. So this is basically entirely focused on cooling the laptop as, as well as it possibly can be cooled. 
Uh, Randy with the $5 super chat uh, says, any guesses on what wattage the 4060 will be pulling out of the box? My over under is 100. I think it's going to do probably around 100 to 110. That's what almost all of the full power RTX 4060s pull. Maybe sometimes it'll do 115. We'll have to find out. Um, to me, the best indicator of wattage pulls should be in Time Spy during the graphical tests. So that'll be telling us the most about uh, what a typical gaming workload will be like when there's a minimal CPU demand on the CPU. Okay, so there was a felt cloth over the laptop itself. And like this, I mean, you can see, right? You guys can see this. This is high quality material that Asus uses on their products, including this more mid-range to budget-friendly-ish, only at $1,329. This is still like the same type of product you're going to get on a, um, in terms of build quality, as a SCAR 16. Like this thing looks and feels just like a SCAR 16 on the outside. And I really like that. Um, so it's one of the reasons why I might, like if I, would, if I had $1,300, why I would probably focus on this laptop in particular because of that like this thing just feels like a higher class of laptop than like the Acer Predator Helios Neo 16, which I have in the other room, um, the Acer Nitros, you know, like those laptops just don't have the same premium feel. Like this is like smooth finish here. It feels good um, and it feels rigid and strong. And the trackpad also, I think, feels a, a bit a higher quality trackpad. Um, it has, you know, it's a glass trackpad. A lot of the laptops around this price point are not glass. And uh, this is a glass trackpad. It's a large trackpad. And notice that I'm not seeing any button for the number pad, right? There's pictures, right? The pictures indicate that there is a number pad, but I'm not seeing it here. Um, going around the laptop, we got our flex test here. Uh, very minimal flex. I'm pushing down really hard. Very minimal flex. Some, a little more flex here, but not too much. In the corners, no flex. Along the top of the laptop, there's not too much flex either, just a little bit. Um, just a little bit more flex here, but almost none in the corner again. No flex in the corners. Going in between the touchpad and the keyboard, this is usually the weakest area of a laptop, and it is feeling pretty dang good. Overall, I'm liking it. Um, this is a great feeling keyboard, all right? I really like the feel of this keyboard. It is... Um, a nice layout with your home end page up buttons being full size over the arrow keys and you just press this FN button plus the arrow key of, uh, you know, of action of choice. You're trying to go home end or, or whatever. That works pretty well. We also have media key buttons for play, uh, play, stop, backtrack, forward track. And then we have our F1 through 12 keys along the top and some additional volume mic mute buttons. Now, when we start the laptop up, there's gonna be, I believe, a sound that occurs. Let's go ahead and get that going. All right, so notice the flash. It does a double flash on the red lights. Then we get our RGB. Another reason why I would probably consider this laptop over something like uh, what Asus or MSI is offering around this price point, this RGB strip looks hella cool. It looks so freaking awesome. I think a lot of people are gonna love that. Um, and then we also have the, look at how bright and vibrant the keyboard backlight is on this unit. Uh, it is very nice to look at, uh, but I will say that it's, to me at least, the backlighting on the key tops are not quite as cleanly backlit as what you're getting on like a Razer product or maybe even um, many of the other products out there from other brands like Alienware, MSI, uh, this is something, this is a weaker point, in my opinion, the actual lettering on the top of the keys here. I'll zoom in and show you what I mean. Um, all right, so um, I believe you can see it. I mean, it doesn't look too bad, but like basically when the, when the RGB lighting is in like the in-between zone phase, like look at this control, like right here, this is a good option, a good example. The control key right here, you can't see the full C, right? Like half the C is dim. Um, and that's true, like the P on the print screen button, like that's dim. Like it's not, it's not being fully lit up on every single letter across the whole keyboard. It's just that, that's probably one of my only kind of semi gripes with the keyboard in general. Although otherwise I think it's a really excellent keyboard and uh, is not something that 
is, I don't know, it doesn't feel cheap. To me, it feels a good typing feel. Um, it's got a great typing feel, and I think almost everyone's going to like this keyboard. And it's got a good layout overall. Um, no number pad, and no number pad on the trackpad either, all right? Um, also, only two stickers, I guess three stickers if you count the G-Sync sticker over here. Um, so that is nice, but yeah. All right, so let me go ahead and turn the lights off so you can see the keyboard uh, backlight a little bit better. And uh, the RGB lighting as well. So, so there's the RGB lighting. It looks freaking awesome, right? All right, it goes all the way around to the left and right sides. And then when we go to the actual keys, you can see that the uh, these eight keys are actually translucent as well as the space bar. Uh, but when you turn the backlighting off, you actually don't see the translucence um, generally. Like notice how they look like black keys now, uh, just with white lettering. And now they look translucent. So if you have the keyboard backlight off, you're not going to see that at all. So if you're in a business meeting, the laptop will look pretty normal. Um, along the top, you can see the uh, volume up, down, mic mute, fan profile switch button, and then the armory crate launch button. And also look at the F, F4, F2, F3, like the, the one, the numbers on those F2, F3, F4s, they're just not lit up very well, right? Those, those backlights are just not pointed in uh, super well, and that's kind of one of the areas of weakness of, uh, like, it just doesn't feel super premium on the backlighting. It's really not that big a deal, but yeah. Anyway, um, I suppose that might be the reason why they ended up not having the backlight on some of the other versions, and because, uh, like, the SCAR-16 doesn't have any backlighting on the function keys along the top at all, and this version does, and I think that's probably because they're only partially lit or something. I don't know. It's interesting. Notice that they do, uh, the backlighting does time out after about 30 seconds. You got to press a key to get it back to come back. All right, so um, we're going to go ahead and change camera real quick. And you can see uh, while we're doing this, you can see everything that we're going to do um, yet for this live stream. Oh, yeah. That's right. We did not take the laptop apart yet. We need to do that first. Okay. Turn these lights back on. Do, 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 do. Cool beans. All right. So it's time to take the laptop apart. So we'll have to shut this laptop down one more time. Shut down. Cool. Uh, Turbo Man says, is there a coil wine issue with this version? I have not heard any coil wine yet, but I haven't really been listening for it. Um, so, and I've heard the coil wine issue has been fixed in some of the new Scar Strix products. So I have high hopes that there's going to be no coil wine in this unit. Um, all right. So time to bust out my iFixit toolkit that I've been using for years now. And let's take this laptop apart, shall we? All right, so we've got, uh, looks like just Phillips head screws for this guy. Let's just go ahead and start taking everything out. Now, I believe the RGB light bar should not have ribbon cables anymore, which should be really beneficial so it's easier to take the bottom of the chassis on and off. So if you need to upgrade and whatever, Previous versions of the Strix G15 and SCAR15 had ribbon cables for the RGB light bar. But as far as I know now, those have been removed. So. All right. All 
Does coil wind cause any long-term damage? No, not at all. Um, coil wind just essentially means that um, the coil inside of the VRM or voltage regulation module is vibrating um, when electricity goes through it. And that vibration is causing sound to be created. Um, and it's primarily just about annoyance. And honestly, as a, uh, as a VRM gets more and more electricity pushed through it, I believe the standard, most likely scenario is that it actually um, goes away eventually, or is more likely to dissipate and become less noticeable over time. Um, but we'll have to see as everyone takes their Strix G18s or whatever um, over the course of years or Strix G16s. And if they had coil one at the beginning, maybe it goes away, we'll have to see. Um, now this screw in the bottom right is a pop-up screw, which means that you do not take that screw out. It actually is used to lift the chassis of the laptop up away from the laptop itself and create a nice easy gap to get your pry tools in. So this is actually a very easy laptop to get into. Um, generally speaking, most laptops are not this easy, um, but I would recommend still using a kind of a plastic pick or tool of some kind to get in here because these plastic, you know, all laptop chassis can take, you know, be damaged if you're not careful when you're taking them apart. I usually, just because I want to be able to have the most careful leverage, I usually take the laptop and put it in my lap like this and then I just work on whatever section I have situated along the top. Now, into the AM sent me this shirt. I love this shirt. Link in the description if you find this shirt awesome and you want to get a similar shirt. 10% off on that link. Um, and if you do use the link, of course, it does help support me as a content creator. And you get an awesome shirt at the same time. So um, it's a win-win. Highly recommend checking out all of the different kinds of shirts they have. Um, they have basic tees. They've got um, shorts, whatever. Definitely worth checking out if you're in the market for some clothing. Awesome. And I've been wearing their shirts for a long time and they're just, they're really high quality shirts, so. Okay, so there it is, we got everything. We got it to completely pop out now. Let's go ahead and transition to the laptop itself. Let me pull the camera around. go cool beans all right so there's the laptop all right so let's go ahead and explain what we got going on on the inside of this laptop so we have our cpu here our cpu fan um, we have one dedicated heat pipe here to the cpu we have two shared heat pipes with the gpu for that CPU. So if you're in a CPU only workload scenario, your CPU is gonna have a ton of juice um, that can go through it and still maintain a decent temperature. Now we have this additional kind of VRM heatsink for the CPU that's gonna be cooled by this GPU fan. So it's a nice combination shared heat pipe scenario here. Um, now for the GPU, we have a third fan right here, a smaller one that blows over the GPU and we'll just cycle air out the back of the laptop over here. Um, and that's just moving ambient air and keeping the general laptop chassis cool. We have a dedicated heat pipe for the GPU right here. I'm gonna move my hand around. All right, and then we have two shared heat pipes. So if the GPU is making a lot of heat, um, it'll go over here to the shared CPU heat pipe and it'll get dissipated a bit better. So <clears throat> very nice. This. Uh, this right here is uh, VRM heatsink again, being cooled, and then that looks like it's a shared heat pipe going between all of this. And we also have this roundabout half moon heat pipe here. Um, these are just, this is gonna be generally cooling some of like the VRMs and other stuff around the GPU. The GPU of course is right here under this triple um, heat pipe area. And I, I really love ASUS's heat pipe layout. It's one of the most extensive heat pipe layouts we've ever seen, and it is very effective at dissipating heat from the laptop, generally speaking. 
Now, notice that when these two big heat pipes that get a lot of the heat, when they come together um, at the, the edge of the fan, they also transmit heat to this heat pipe that goes across the back of the de device here um, and then goes out to the fins across everything. So that way it's using the entire length of the laptop chassis to, to dissipate heat, which is really freaking cool design. Um, and it's the same design that they use on the SCAR 16 and the SCAR 18. Okay, so let's talk upgradability on this laptop. We've got a M.2 slot right here. So you can put an SSD between uh, this and right here, uh, right above the Wi-Fi card. So it's an empty slot and it's available for upgrade out of the box. There's nothing in it. Um, you can obviously also upgrade your Wi-Fi and if I were to take a look at the Wi-Fi card itself for you guys, let's go ahead and just zoom in on that. There's the Wi-Fi card. Looks like it's an Intel Model AX211. So that's a nice Wi-Fi card, better than um, some of the Realtek Wi-Fi cards in my opinion. All right, so then we've got, right here, we've got our RAM. And normally, let's just do it right if I can. Let's see if I can get the battery to get unplugged. You know what, we can see the RAM without having to unplug it. So let's just, you got two sticks of RAM right here, two sodium slots. All right, so one and two. I'm not gonna take the RAM out because it's just too much of a hassle. Uh, unplugging and replugging in the battery, which I would recommend doing that if you're going to take the RAM out. But you can see this is a Micron, uh, Micron, Micron memory, eight gig, one RX 16 PC 5 4800. So this memory is rated for 4800 DDR5 memory. It's not rated for 5600 and only running at 4800, which is what we had on the SCAR series. Um, so that's a little bit different. Now we also have a Micron SSD right here, and it's a 512 gig Micron SSD that goes, you know, it's a 2280 long guy here. And I would recommend upgrading that um, at some point down the line or just getting a second one maybe for the other SSD slot. All right. so. Uh, the last things that I want to point out on this laptop is the battery is a 90 watt hour battery. That's very nice, a very big battery. And also we have two big, notice the two big speakers here on the left and right sides. This is certainly above average sizing um, of speakers for this price range like the MSI Pulse 15 and some of the other laptops have much smaller speakers. So I'm hoping the quality of these speakers is gonna be awesome um, and very loud, hopefully, you know. So we'll have to find out in the speaker test. Anyway, so that's my diagnosis on explanation of the inside of the laptop. I hope that is helpful. Um, sweet. Yeah, and this does have the liquid metal too, right? Like on the actual CPU and GPU, like we were looking at the speakers, uh, we were looking at the sticker um, and this has liquid metal applied to the CPU and GPU for the, in, the improved cooling capability, as well as that triple fan design, which again, I think that's one of the premium features like between the speaker quality, the cooling quality of this laptop, all of those things, factor together to making this product a tier of laptop that's a little bit above and beyond your typical gaming laptop at this price point. Because there's a lot of shortcuts that companies start making when they're trying to make a really cheap laptop. And I'm really surprised that Asus was able to put such a, I guess, competent amount of features, high-end features, into a $13, $29 laptop. I mean, technically it's uh, $13.99, but yeah. 
No heat sinks on SSDs. Uh, not usually needed in gaming laptop SSDs. Uh, most gaming laptops don't um, use them. They might have a little bit of uh, like, like the thermal pad. Um, that's usually at most. But they're pro if, they, if there is any thermal pad, it may be on the bottom of the SSD. You don't see it on the top half. By the way, I usually put in the pop-up screw first, not last, just so you know. But it looks like the pop-up screw and everything snapped together okay anyway. Okay, so, very nice. Uh, one thing I wanna point out about this bottom design is this is partially why the chassis is so rigid with the Strix G16. We have multiple supports. We have support here, 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 even in the middle, a lot of laptops have no support in the middle where the, where the laptop touches. It's almost always in the edge corners and that's why there's always flex in the middle of the chassis. You also have some support here and in the far corners. Big rubber feet too, high quality rubber feet. I love to see it. Um, like all of those little details about this Strix G16 is giving me a really good impression of the product as a whole. So. As long as the actual performance of the product lines up with everything else that we're seeing about it, I'm getting more and more excited about the Strix G16. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we can get the laptop turned on. There we go. Okay, so um, when you turn the lap, when you take the bottom of the laptop off, sometimes you have to have the power adapter plugged in to be able to get it to actually turn on again. It's kind of interesting. Um, Does liquid metal need repasting over time? Um, the Asus rep that I talked to about that, mm -hmm. I asked him that question specifically, and he said that the liquid metal in the Asus products should last for more than 10 years, unless there was a problem with it, how it was initially applied. Um, but as long as that, the initial application was good, it should last 10 years mm -hmm. with minimal degradation. Um, probably like, like a few degrees degradation over that period of time. Okay, so notice the color on the display. You can already see this is a high-ish quality display. Like, yeah, yeah, I love it. All right, uh, I'm actually very curious how bright this display is. I don't think it's actually gonna be the full brightness. I don't think, I don't know, we'll find out. Okay, so like are like not 500 nits nebula display bright. I think it's a 300 nits display, but we'll actually find out here very soon when we start doing our display test. Okay, so laptop overview real quick. Um, webcam here, let's go ahead and check out the camera quality. Oh, oh, whoa, you, you. Ooh. Not, not amazing on the camera quality. Um, let me take a photo and I can zoom in on the quality for you. So first thing you'll notice, it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty grainy image overall. All right. Oop. It's a very grainy image overall um, with, look at there's like no details on the hair on my beard here, even in this kind of more studio lighting environment, the colors of my face are off quite a bit. Um, it's in general, a very poor webcam. Don't get me wrong, it'll work if you need to do a Skype crawl to grandma, but you're not gonna look very pretty doing it, all right? Um, cool. All right, let's go ahead and do our... Do, do, do. Let's go ahead and review the ports next. Cool, all right, so we've kind of reviewed the ports once already, but I'll just go ahead and show them to you in person here as well. Um, so let's do that, there we go, perfect. All right, so we have our ethernet port, HDMI 2.1 for high bit rate HDMI output. Thunderbolt 4, which is going to support external GPUs if you want to get like an RTX 4090 in an external enclosure. 
uh, USB-C with power delivery. And of course, Thunderbolt 4 should also have power delivery. So both of those should support that. And then we have our headphone port. That's a headset combo for mic and speakers. All right, no ports on the front, no ports on the back, all exhaust on the back. And on the right side, we have two USB 3.2 Gen 2s. So highest and uh, very good USB A's on the right side that are very fast. Now, the downside about them being on the right side is that if you're dealing with a wired mouse, the mouse cable can get in your way. I would recommend getting a wireless mouse with a high speed dongle attachment. So you have no, basically no latency introduction because of that um, wireless mouse, um, which allows you to play games and all that stuff. Okay. Um, cool. Randy says, Skype your grandma. Well, there's still time. Oh. Um, yeah. You, do, you definitely want to Skype your grandma while you still have time. I don't have any grandmas left. So, yep. Do it. Do it while you still have time. Okay. All right. So, um, speaker test. All right. I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the toolkit away as well real quick. Get that. Ba doom ba doom. Cool beans, cool beans. There we go. All right, we're gonna we're gonna be doing a downward firing speaker test. We got my SSD. I'm gonna get this plugged in as well. Let's put that in that one. We're gonna set the SSD on the back side of it. And this screen is so bright, it's making everything else um, look dim. So I'm just gonna dim this down quite a bit and hope that we can get some better overall ambient lighting. All right, cool. Yeah, there we go. It's a little bit better, right? Did it dim? I feel like we're not dimming, actually. We're not actually changing the brightness of the display. Yes, yeah, so I think the Windows display brightness control has failed. Let's go for a restart. Maybe that'll fix that. Uh, it's going to be very important for the display test that we can actually control the brightness of the display, obviously. Do you know what the desktop equivalent is to a 4060 laptop? Um, I'm guessing, I mean, if I were to look it up, it'd probably be in like the RTX 3060, maybe 3060 Ti range. Probably 3060 Ti, let's see. I'm checking, checking. Yeah, 11,500, so between a 3060 and a 3060 Ti, like, yeah, it's in that ballpark, just a little bit worse than a 3060 Ti for a desktop piece. Okay, so can we control the brightness now? We cannot control the brightness right now. It's still not going up and down in brightness. I wonder what's going on with that. Maybe... Yeah, I'm trying to do the brightness. It's just not doing anything. Interesting. Interesting bug. Um, so Asus, time to work on that. Um, okay. Speaker test. We can do the speaker test regardless. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in over here. Go. 
Um, do I have the anime matrix on the G14? Uh, no, I do not. Um, you have to get a higher end one or buy one specifically that has it. The higher end models that usually have it um, or the mini LED, it's gonna have one or the other, either the anime matrix or the mini LED. It cannot have both actually. Okay, so here we go. All right, so um, before we actually do this, I need to point out there is a thing called Dolby Access that comes with your Asus laptop. This lets you control your audio profiles under the settings section here. Um, and I generally recommend the dynamic section. Um, usually sounds the best, but we can do a quick audio test with it. Let's go ahead and pop in. We're gonna go ahead and play Peter Spacey Roar. Okay. Cool. So the Anton Max net sound. For music, at least, it seems like the uh, the music profile was a little bit better, honestly. I feel like the music profile was better. Let's try Faded Aeon. Yeah, I think, I think the music balance profile was better. Let's just keep it at that right now during our music test. And uh, sweet, let's go ahead and let's get the decibel meter up in front here so you can see how loud the speaker gets. I'm gonna be quiet so we can see our decibel rating. Forty three and a half decibels right now in the room. Um, let's go ahead and do Peter Spacey Roar. Okay, so definitely could have slightly better clarity, but there's noticeable bass. It's pretty dang clear. Let's try Faded A on Half-Life. Here we go. That is such a smooth and clear audio transition from the intro to that to like the breakdown is awesome. Next up we have La 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 Love You Like by Deuce Williams. Yep, this is a far above average speaker system for a gaming laptop, much better than much of the competition out there. Um, so if you're after the, not the, it's not the best, it's definitely not the best audio speaker that you can get in a gaming laptop, but it's pretty dang close, all right? It is pretty dang close in terms of a higher end speaker. I'm pretty sure this is the same speaker system that's in the SCAR 16 and SCAR 18. Maybe it literally the exact same units. I'm not sure, but it sounded so similar. Um, certainly the same, I believe, as the Strix G18. I think there may be two extra speakers in the Scar series, like a like so it's slightly better. But 
the 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 main speakers in this, I believe, are the same um, as the Scar series. But you have like extra tweeters or something like that in the Scar series. So it's 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 very close in terms of audio sounding, and it's much better than almost everything at this price point. Um, okay. The G14 with the 4060 usually does not have the anime matrix. Um, just so you know, mine did not have it, but it still has like the holographic film in the back between the inside little dots. It still looks pretty good. Um, okay. So, I mean, I guess we can do our display test with the, whatever brightness it's set at. It's probably set to maximum brightness. Um, But, yeah, it's not changing the brightness at all. So, very weird. But there's nothing I can do about that except just make the test happen. So, the 4080 at G14 at Best Buy has the anime matrix. That may be true. I would check if you can. Check, like, the detailed, um, the detailed description if you can. All right, so we're gonna move on to our display test. We're gonna to try to see what this has in it. It it may not have it. Okay, sorry. It may not. It may. This just the important thing to know about this test is that uh, it may not be the max brightness. That's what I was trying to say. Sorry. Uh, okay. So I gotta get law sign the the uh, key here. Do 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 do. There it is. Okay. Do do. Okay, cool. And sweet. So we are uh, at display test right now. Um, and we have done everything that's above that. We included the speaker test. We have not done fan testing with decibel meter. That's actually something new. I'm really excited about doing it. Um, I have kind of done it here and there, but I'm going to try to make it a consistent thing that I do in every live unboxing if I can. All right, so we're testing this at whatever the default in its brightness is. Like I said, I think it's 100 right now, but it may not be. So, um, and there's nothing I can do about this. This is where we do the best we can. Um, so it is on there. It's good to go. Let's go ahead and do our test. Um, overall, my impressions of the display is that it's a, it's a very nice... 1920 by 1200 resolution display. Uh, so it means it's a 16 by 10. It means it's a little bit taller. They mainly took out the bottom bezel here. It's much narrower bottom bezel than it used to have on the SCAR 15 series. And um, it, this display shouldn't have any ghosting on it. But I mean, oops, I hit cancel. Um, this display shouldn't have any ghosting on it, but uh, we'll have to actually test it in, in Apex Legends. The my my general like at 16 inches, 19 uh, 1920 by 1200 resolution is a pretty good spot for 16 inches. It's a bit low of a resolution for 17 or 18 inches. Um, I don't think that it's necessarily. Um, I don't think it's necessarily the best resolution. I think QHD does look better at 16, at least to my eyes. But if you have lower, I guess, not as good eyesight. Like I have like 2016 vision last time I checked. It's probably like a little bit worse now. So I have like above average vision. So I can see those, those little details a bit better. That said, it's hard for me to see those little details when I'm actually playing games. Because... Being able to see the little details on things in motion is extra hard compared to seeing those details 
when they're standing still. Um, so basically, I think the biggest time you're going to see the difference between full HD and QHD is when you're looking at things like text up close, maybe if you're doing video editing or Photoshop. Those people, the people that are doing the, the graphic design work in general, I would recommend a higher color gamut display than what this one's going to have anyway. Um, which I talked about at the beginning of the live stream. It's, you know, the ones that have 100% um, DCI P3 color gamut, like the MSI Pulse 15, potentially like the Acer Predator Helios uh, 300 has a QHD 240 hertz display, though I don't know what color gamut that display is. It may not be a super high color gamut display, but I know the Pulse 15 color gamut is ridiculously high. Okay, so here's our results. Um, we'll have to see, like, I, I just, just know that the this may not be representing the full brightness of the display. Um, so right now we got 100% of sRGB or 99%, basically 100%, 73% of Adobe, 74% of the P3 color gamut, and my Spider 5 Elite usually underestimates the, um, the color gamuts in general compared to other testing tools by like seven, eight percent, somewhere in that range. Um, so I would expect this to be closer to 80% Adobe RGB, maybe 81, 82% P3 color gamut. On the brightness, it's saying 287 nits with one, uh, 1160 to one contrast ratio. That's a bit better than average for contrast ratios, which is good. It's gonna make everything pop a little bit better on the screen. Um, a lot of laptops these days are doing like 900 to one contrast ratio, so it's nice to see. 287 nits, again, we don't know how bright this display actually is supposed to be because we may not be at 100% brightness. This may be like 80% brightness that we're testing at here, but it could be 100% brightness here. I'm this. I'm pretty sure now that this display is a 300 nit display. Take this with a grain of salt, okay? Um, because the laptop this brightness setting is not changing right now. Um, okay, and I and I have done the latest updates, by the way. This, all the latest BIOS and Windows updates have been applied, so it's something that Asus just needs to fix. Um, okay, checking. We're on to our fan noise test. So we are currently in fan noise testing with decibel meter. So let's go ahead and unplug this, the display testing. And we're gonna move into do, 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 fan noise testing. All right, so I'm gonna try to go ahead and make my, um, we're gonna start out in silent mode, okay? And I'm gonna try to make my external fan over here quieter. All right. That should help a little bit with the ambient noise. All right, and now inside of the laptop, let's go ahead and just open this up. We're going to open up 3D Mark Time Spy. Uh, I think Time Spy might need to download in the background actually for a second. It doesn't take long to download. Um, thankfully, I mean, this is like a Wi-Fi test right here, what we're about to do, downloading Time Spy. Actually, it may, we'll have to see. Uh, right now, so Steam has changed it. So now whenever um, you're launching a game, it shows like that it's preparing to launch actually over here, uh, right next to the label for the play button. Play cancel, now it says running install script Microsoft Direct X. So uh, it's, it's basically just doing a little bit of prep work here before we get into, um, before it actually is letting it launch the laptop, uh, or sorry, the 3D Mark. Uh, RTX 37 says, not a fan of the huge RO on the right side below the keyboard. I don't know why they would cut it off like that. RO on the right side below the keyboard. Oh, that's ROG. It's probably like, yeah. It's like the Republic of Gamers or whatever. I'm pretty sure that's what it's, it's like supposed to be doing, showing that basically. Um, but yeah, I get you. Uh, Lebroni says, hey Gizmo, will you review the Acer Predator 14470? Apparently it comes with a 250 hertz mini LED screen and no one knows it exists. 
Thanks for letting me know, Lebroni. Um, if it comes into America, I will consider reviewing it if it, if it has compelling specs and everything. Um, the thing is, uh, I just need to, I'm just trying to do as many popular laptops as I can right now. Uh, the more popular the laptop, the better, you know? So more people that are interested in actually watching the videos is, is the better. Um, how do you compare this with a G17 2023 and an AMD 7945HX? Oh, man. Well, we're waiting for 3D Mark to install. So we can go ahead and do this little pseudo comparison for you real quick. Um, so to do this comparison, I'm just going to pop over to my laptop list. And we can just look up the Strix lineup. I'll just search Strix. All right, so here's the Strix G17 4060. This costs 17 69. All right. So here's the Strix G17 Ryzen 9 7945HX for multi core performance. Oh my God. No, I mean, basically, it's going to be insane. It's going to be like 34,000 in Cinebench. Um, it's going to be a much more powerful CPU. Not necessarily for gaming. Gaming, it's going to be very good. Very good CPU for gaming. Um, but some games do favor Intel, and this i7 in the G16 could theoretically maybe beat this Ryzen 9 7945HX in certain titles. But yeah, overall, excellent price. $1769 for this level of CPU, and it's a QHD 240Hz display. So you get a really nice high-end display, I believe, with high levels of color gamut as well on that QHD 240Hz display. I think it's like supposed to be rated for 100% P3 color gamut. Let's check the tech specs. Um, but yeah, this thing's going to be bigger. It's it's not going to be as portable as the G16. It's only one inch larger, at least in theory. But if we pop down to the display quality, um, it's a Dolby Vision supported display with G-Sync. Or full HD 144 hertz, depends on what you which one you get. It's not, it's not really showing the display specs fully there. It is saying 100% DCI-P3 color gamut right here. Okay, so so yeah, I mean, in terms of display quality, the G17 is much higher display quality. Um, the CPU is much more powerful, and you do get a bigger SSD in here. So for $430 more. I feel like that could be a worthy upgrade if you need the CPU performance, but it is kind of an overkill CPU um, for the amount of performance in the laptop itself. So um, so yeah, that's kind of a quick quick and dirty, I guess, comparison there. Um, 3D Mark is still loading up right now. Oh, it's just popping up right now, so that kind of works out timing-wise. Um, okay, so, chomp a chom. So our goal is going to be to load 3D Mark Time Spy up on here. And then we're going to switch between the different power profiles. We're going to do a silent. We're going to let it run for like a little while to get the temperatures and all that to, to go in. You know, we want the temperatures to basically to go up, spike upwards a bit. All right, so we're ready to run Time Spy. Um, also, might as well. Oh, you know what? We want to do a benchmark loop. We don't want to just do the general time spy thing, too. All right, so we are in silent mode. I'm going to put it to turbo mode for just a moment. Just because I'm trying to, uh, I want it to load as quickly as I can here. Give it all the juice during this sprint. Uh, Ali, no problem. I hope that uh, comparison was helpful for you. But yeah, the, the CPU is obviously the biggest difference and the display, those two things put together. Um, the keyboard and overall feel of the machine should be pretty similar, right?
Do, 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 do. Okay, so after we do these fan tests, we're gonna move into our CPU benchmarks. We need to cancel this initial test here and we need to load a custom run. Graphics test two, window loop enabled, run custom. All right, so this custom run will basically keep the laptop fully going, like nonstop. All right, and then uh, that'll let us load up our fan profiles and test the decibel meter on how loud this laptop gets. All right, sweet. Just gonna put this a little bit in front. All right, let's go ahead and um, we already know the room decibel is about 43 uh, and a half decibels. So we're gonna go and put this into silent mode and then we'll see how loud silent mode is, all right? Here is Time Spy running in the background right now. Right now, the loudest thing in the room is the Razer Blade 18, which is doing the live streaming right next to the, Scars, the Strix G6, G16. So the laptop is so quiet. It is phenomenally quiet. The, um, the actual laptop itself, we can check out the Time Spy results over there. Um, can it? Focus, there we go. You know, we are doing 55 decibel or 55 watts to the GPU at 1800 um, megahertz to the clock speed. That's actually not that bad considering, and it's only 60 degrees. That is really good for how quiet this machine is. So that's a pretty good amount of power. Um, it's obviously not gonna be a tremendous amount of power, but considering the temperature it's pushing, it's awesome. All right, we're gonna switch it up to performance mode. It's gonna jump from performance wattages, or it's gonna jump from silent wattages up to performance wattages. And there it is, all the way up to 110 watts, approximately, almost instantly, um, 107, 105. The, the CPU also jumped up in wattage from like 10 up to 30, 35 right now. Um, our temperatures are also climbing, more watts being pushed through the system is making it run warmer, of course. Um, let's go ahead and focus now on the audible meter, audio meter. Well, the fans are still kicking up a little bit louder here. So let me go ahead and just go to the audio meter and we'll let it kind of um, acclimate to the new. We'll let it acclimate to the, the new, um, the new temps and performance level here. I think we're getting close to the max fan noise for performance mode though. I'm gonna also set the mic facing and just be quiet for about 15 seconds here. Performance mode is still so quiet. I am very impressed with performance mode overall. We're gonna jump it up to turbo mode now. Let's go ahead and see what we get for performance numbers as they change in the background. Here we go. Turbo mode, activate. Um, you can hear the, that fan noise increase, right? It's interesting because the wattages are actually not changing much between performance mode and turbo mode right now. It's just the fan noise has gone up. Um, I'm gonna, and I'm assuming the temperatures will go down given that the fan noise has increased. We're starting to see 60s, 69 on that CPU temp. That is 
These temperatures are phenomenal, by the way. Really amazing temperatures um, during these tests so far. And this is not even with max fans on right now. So let's go ahead and zoom out and let's see what we're getting for our fan noise. Fifty-two decibels. That's phenomenal. Okay, uh, so our last profile that we'll need to do is going to be manual mode. We're going to switch over to manual mode, and we're going to just set everything to max. Max. Maximum fans are about to engage. I'm going to go ahead and actually focus the camera in on. the decibel meter and be quiet while I do this. So 57 and maybe 57.5 decibels um, with max fans, about average for most high-end gaming laptops with triple fans like this. I am kind of hearing a little bit of warble, wobble sound on the, the fan um, on the, I don't know. Like it's not, it's not, can you guys hear it? I didn't hear it in turbo mode at all, but I seem to be hearing it. Let me pick up the laptop and kind of try to get a better idea of which fan. It kind of sounds like one of the fans may be struggling or something's going on with a fan. Let me put this down for a second. Oh. It's the whistling. It's it's the air is whistling as it's going through the bottom of the chassis. Let me. Can you hear that whistle? I'm gonna go ahead and set it to uh, turbo mode. Yeah, in turbo mode, the, it goes away. I, that's a pretty, I've ne almost never heard, like it's literally a whistling sound. Um, almost never hear that. That's only in max fan mode. I don't think, I don't know. If I was using this laptop, given the, the amazing cooling system this laptop has, you really don't need to run max fans with this laptop ever. Um, turbo fans are gonna be awesome and you're gonna have good temperatures with that, I think. Um, so yeah. I would probably just keep this thing in turbo mode most of the time. Um, okay. Tag says, how would you compare this with the G15 Advantage Edition from a year or so ago? Um, I think the Advantage Edition is still a decent buy when it's on sale for like $1,100. That's how much I would pay for the Advantage Edition now. I wouldn't really want to pay more than maybe $1,100, maybe $1,200 for that. Um, so... Cool. All right. Excellent. Uh, let's go ahead and actually do a time spy run now. Um, and I want to mention that I'm, I do have a plan to hopefully do another live stream with this laptop, tuning it, undervolting it, overclocking it, and just making it as awesome performance wise as I possibly can. Um, and we are going to test this thing in manual max fan mode. Mode. Okay for all of our tests. But given the fact that it makes a little whistling sound in manual fan mode, I probably wouldn't recommend manual fan mode, at least at 100% fans. I would drop the fans down a little bit um, so that it doesn't make that kind of whistling sound. Let's go ahead and run Time Spy. 
since we have it open. We're going to also re gonna reposition the laptop for our, unbed our, our, uh, our benchmarking phase now. We're moving into our CPU benchmarks, gaming benchmarks, and Time Spy benchmarks, and we're going to see what this Strix G16 can do against the competition out there, all right? Scott says, hey, wondering if you're planning on doing the overclocking vid for the Legion Pro 7i. Yeah, yes, I still planning on doing that. I just wanted to get uh, a couple of new unboxing videos out first. Uh, couldn't be any more happier with mine. Runs everything on high, cold, $13, $20. Yep. Can throttle stop be used on this machine? Maybe it's an HX processor. It might be possible. Not sure. Okay, so here we are. Time spy. Our GPU is boosting to 2565 out of the box. That's really good base boost. Um, that's 50 megahertz higher than the G14 was boosting. Look at our temperatures in the 50s right now. <laughs> that liquid metal is doing a good job right now. I think it'll creep up into the high 60s, maybe low 70s, if uh, given enough time. But that is crazy impressive. Um, wow. I wonder what this could overclock to if it's doing 25, 50. Please keep in mind that we have a 50 slash 100 overclock out of the box, given that that's built, baked into Armory Crate manual mode. Um, if we were to tune this, I, I would not be surprised if we could push this over uh, 11K for the benchmark on this. Um, Uh, Scott, I have not heard any coil whine, but I'm hearing kind of like a fan whistling sound when maximum fans are enabled. So, yeah, I have not heard any coil whine on this unit, though, yet. Randy says, breakout afterburner. I'm really tempted to do a quick and dirty try to see what I can get it to go to uh, overclock. Because if we're doing 2550 maybe we could push it all the way up to, I don't know, what do you think? Maybe 2,700 megahertz on the overclock? Maybe. Scott says, that's good. Mine sounded like a bee was stuck in the fan grills. I think that you're talking about the same thing that I'm talking about then because it's kind of like a whistling sound. It kind of sounds like a bee stuck in the fan grills in a, in a sense. But it's only because the fans are so um, pulling so much air through there, and there must be some kind of gap or something that's causing the whistling noise to happen. I'm pretty sure that if I wanted to keep this laptop, I could probably just use some kind of like exacto knife and kind of expand wherever um, is causing the whistling noise, um, and then get rid of that whistling sound. You know, because it's basically because the plastic has come together in some spot or something. Wow, very high. FPS, um, I can't really see that. Let me try to turn this down a little bit. Very high FPS in this in the Time Spy CPU test. Wow. Um, Randy McNeely with the $5 Super Chat. Thank you so much. Um, and because of that, I probably really should bust out the freaking MSI Afterburner doing overclock. Okay, so 10,620, 14,708. Those are our base clocks, our base, basically, um, scores, which are very, very good scores overall. Um, all right. Let's move into a quick and dirty overclock. Here we go. Curve editor. Let's go. Um, we're probably going to be using... 
Let's try 975. Uh, let's try one. We'll just do one. All right, and we're going to go for 27.50 for our clock speed, okay? So we're going to do a, we're doing a overclock here. We're locking the voltage to one volt. Um, and let's just go ahead and try applying that. Let's see if we can get it to actually do that 2750 for our overclock. It, it, it may not hold, it may not be stable, but um, we might as well try it real quick and just see if, if we can boost our GPU score above 11,000. One overclock attempt. We'll, I, I really want to come back and do like more of a tuning session with this laptop. Um, so I'm not going to do a full tune here because we need to keep moving through the benchmarks. But one time spy run will be okay. All right. Here comes the blue smoke screen. Yeah, this is a really high overclock. Um, default boost clocks for this is 2,500. We're doing 250 overclock, basically with time spy, it's probably gonna crash. So this may be a really fast time spy run. If you want a guide on how to undervolt and overclock your laptop, I basically made one yesterday, or was it two days ago, with the Zephyrus G14, so. Go check out that video. It goes through how to use the MSI Afterburner Curve Editor, um, reduce the voltage of the laptop GPU, lock it to that lower voltage, and still run at the same cl clock speed you were getting before, reducing temperatures and thermal overhead at the same time. So kind of give you an advertisement because that's pretty. That's going to be pretty much relevant to almost all gaming laptops out there. Look at us, 2745. That is insane. Super high boost clock on this Strix G16 right now. Can it maintain it? Let's find out. Twenty-seven thirty. So it actually did have to come down. It had to go down to the a slightly lower voltage. Um, probably like one or two stops down. But it's doing a pretty dang good job. Staying above 2,700 for the OC is insane. Like that—that that is the highest I think I've seen a 4060 go so far um, in all of my tests. Though I have not pushed all of the 4060s I've tested uh, to the max their maximum potential. Um, Ellie says 105 watts on that GPU. That's right. We are running it at the same um, voltage basically, so it's going to pull the same amount of wattage. Pretty much no matter what. Um, 27.45. 27.30 again. So 109 watts. Dun, dun, dun. Um, I do want to point out that the, the Intel CPU is doing a good job of staying at a high clock speed. 4.9 gigahertz. 4.7 gigahertz um, during this test. And again, our temperatures are just low 60s. Low 60s. That is so cool. Uh, you know, when you think about it, it makes sense because this, this laptop was designed, like inherently designed for an RTX 4080 and 4090, 175 watt throughput. That's what this thermal solution was designed for. So it would make sense that we're going to be able to keep the temperatures on the GPU CPU below 70 under max fans when we're pulling such a lower amount of wattage through the system. All right. So we made it successfully through the time spy run, keeping our GPU boost clock above 2,700. Um, I believe the whole time, 2730 or 2745. Uh, that's a phenomenal, that's absolutely phenomenal. Let's see if it can finish this out and what we get. Come on, 
Can we break 11K for the first time on my testing with a 4060? Loading results. Ten thousand nine hundred and eighty-two. Oh my God! It's so close. It is so close. Oh, okay. It's basically eleven k. All right. It's basically eleven k. All right. Phenomenal. Um, let's get to CPU testing. Cinebench R twenty-three. Yeah. So, my impression of the fan noise right now is that there's all, the only way I'd be able to deal with this type of like kind of whistling sound is if I had headphones. I, otherwise, it would just be like I could not deal with the whistling sound. Um, and then I would I would try to go in there and try to figure out why the whistling is happening and just fix it myself probably if this was my laptop because I'm pretty sure this kind of whistling is going to be fixable oursel ourselves, you know. Um, you know, I might try to take the laptop apart again, look for anything that might be causing a whistling on the inside first before I destroy anything, and then – Really try to listen carefully to where it is um, making the whistling sound and then make the modification myself. Okay, so um, here we are. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we got six P cores and then we've got eight E cores. All right. So six P cores, eight E cores. We are ready to test this thing. We have everything maxed out on our power limit sliders. Um, oh, right. We're actually not quite ready to test this because we got to get process lasso going again. I don't really recommend using process lasso, but it's a way that I do my benchmarking super fairly between all the different laptops and just to make sure there's nothing going on in the background. Um, you know, so we're going to do Cine uh, Cinebench to be above normal priority so it does not get, inter it get interrupted. All right. And then we're just going to close process last. So we'll stop this. We're going to do a, we're going to start with just a couple of normal runs. And let's see what our P cores and E cores are hitting. All right, so uh, we are doing 4.4 gigahertz across all of the P cores, 3.6 gigahertz across all of the E cores right now. That is a good amount of performance coming out of both of those, um, about what you would expect on an all core turbo boost. Our temperatures are only 77 degrees right now, 81 degrees for the CPU package, 83 degrees for the CPU package, that is really good temperatures. Our wattage is 125 watts of power going through that CPU. Wow. Okay. Very nice initial performance. 19,637. That's a little bit lower than what we had in the sheet. Um, but I'm guessing you could go to the 21,000 mark with an undervolt. That's my guess right now. Oop, I keep mumping it. All right, let's pull up HW info again. 117, 120 watts. Temperatures are looking really good. 80, 83 degrees on the CPU. Our core clocks are still the same. It's looking really, really good. This looks perfectly sustainable over a long period of time. 19,846 for our CPU, 19,846. Very good, again. Um, I'm curious if we just keep the window on Cinebench the whole time, if we can bust the 20K mark, maybe. Um, Is MSI better than I buy power PCs? Uh, that's just going to, I think, depend on the specs and the pricing of the individual PC. But um, I think I'm pretty sure I buy power uses MSI parts in some of their PCs. So I wouldn't really say it's better or worse necessarily. Just, just depends. So 20,091. Very nice. 
Um, now, for the sake of time efficiency, we're going to run this like five times. This is our fourth run back to back. And we're going to run this a couple more times. And then we're just going to use that number as our number because I think it's going to be super consistent on this laptop right here. Still doing the exact same exact same performance across all the P cores, across all the E cores, across all the wattages. So uh, your 10 minute score is going to be exactly the same as what we're getting right now. It's not like it's going to be overheating after because we, we're going several minutes in and it still hasn't overheated. 19,965. So it's going to basically be right at 20K for this laptop. Um, very nice. I mean, it's, it's very good for the money. For the money, it's going to be tough to beat. There's going to be some other laptops out there that are going to be competitive with this. But for the money, awesome. Very good performance levels coming out of this laptop in Cinebench R23. Sweet. Sweet. All right, last run, and then we're going to move into our game testing. Do, do, do. 20,151. So there you go. There's our 10-minute score test or equivalent that it would probably almost for sure be. I love it. Um, very good CPU tuning and performance levels. Let's move into Apex Legends. Do, do, do. <laughs> so the big thing launch error what the big thing about apex legends that i try to test whenever i test apex legends is the ghosting on the display and the quality of, I guess, um, screen response time. Like, and just kind of gauging it in a very realistic, interesting, Apex Legends says it is not valid. Interesting. Uh, I'm not sure how long this is going to take to uh, to check, but basically when I test Apex Legends, my goal is to uh, see is the screen have a does the screen have a great response rate? Can this laptop be used for esports games very well or not? Um, and then, of course, we're also testing the actual performance of Apex Legends. But generally speaking, on most of these laptops, it can push well over 100 frames per second, um, no problem at 1080p. Um, while we're waiting for this to go through, Garchomp wants to know, what's the best 14-inch gaming laptop in your opinion? Asus, Razer, Alienware, Acer. Um, well, right now, I'm really, I'm loving the Zephyrus G14 with an RTX 4080 or 4090. Those, that's my number one right now. Simply because great display meets super powerful GPU, priced very reasonably, with a nice Ryzen chip with eight cores and four nanometer technology for great battery life, um, extremely portable, good thermals, as long as you tune them correctly. And I did make a video explaining how to tune the Zephyrus G14. So if you, and I did put that, I posted that like two days ago. So check the video live stream history, the one before this live stream. Um, you're gonna to wanna to watch that and use some of those tips if you get the Zephyrus G14, if you wanna have great temperatures on the G14, because it is capable of putting out really good temps. If you don't wanna tweak anything, then I really like the Stealth 14 because it has great performance um, at a reasonable price uh, and great temperatures all out of the box. And it's a full HD display instead of QHD, so that matches the VRAM of a 4060 quite a bit better. 37% on verifying the integrity of these files. Super weird. Hmm. This makes me want to try to open every game on the laptop before I do the live stream with it. Cause I just, I hate these little delays like this. Um, 
but it is what it is. You know, there's nothing I can do about this. We're doing a we're 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 all good. All right, we're gonna move in while we're letting it go here. It's gonna take another couple minutes, so might as well just go ahead and go back to comparing this laptop with some of the competition out there. Uh, we recently we, we compared against the Strix G17 across the whole Strix lineup. All right. For $1,000, you got the RTX 3060 variant. It is quite nice um, overall in terms of its performance, its the quality of the, the laptop. It's a good value with the Strix G15. It's not bad, but it's just, it's, it's not, um, it doesn't have frame gen on the 3060. The display is a full HD 300 hertz display, which I like that, but the Ryzen 7 6800H isn't going to get that high of frame rates in most esports games anyway. So that's going to be a bit tough. Um, but maybe certain games it will. Strix G16, this is the 4050 variant, slightly weaker CPU for 1189. I feel like it's super worth the upgrade to go to the 4060 version of this laptop with the slightly better processor as well. Um, so I would say probably not get this one and instead go for the the 16 inch with a 4060 version instead. This one's an interesting option, the G16 with the i9. This is the 24 core 32 thread. It's going to be a massive improvement to anyone that's looking to do video editing or Photoshop. QHD 240 hertz, 500 nits display, much better quality display. You get the latest and greatest display from Asus. With this version, 1599 is, uh, I I really love. If I really love this, if you're after CPU performance and display quality. So like, if you're a video editor or graphic designer on a budget. This is definitely the better buy for $300, getting the display upgrade, SSD upgrade, and a processor upgrade. That's going to be super worth it over the one I'm testing today. The G17 Ryzen 9 7945HX. This is the Ryzen version. We talked about this compared against this one. Huge CPU performance, absolutely bonkers CPU performance, and a nice QHD display. 1769 is a bit steep, though. I think I would rather go with this version over that one because it's $140 cheaper and you get an even better quality display at 500 nits and it's 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Yeah, this one's the better This one's the better bang for the buck or better buy, I think, right here. Um, okay, so it says all of the files are validated. Let's, let's see if Apex Legends will run. If it doesn't run, there's not much I can do about it. We'll have to just move on to the next game. Looks like it's not running. Weird. Not a valid Win32 application. What does that mean? Um, if this... If this keeps happening, then we might have problems. But uh, Modern Warfare 2. Let's see if this one will run. Um, you know, if it keeps happening, then it may mean that we have some kind of driver or issue that needs to be addressed. All right, no. Um, yeah, the Flow X thirteen forty seventy or the ZenBook fourteen Pro forty seventy, both of those could be good options too. But if I had the money, I would go for the G fourteen with a forty eighty or forty ninety over those. Um, because then you don't need an external GPU like the Flow x13 at all you'll just be super happy for a super long with the g14 and then the zenbook pro 14 40 70 uh if you go to the 40 80 version of the g14 it's going to be like 60 percent faster it's going to be so much more powerful so that's kind of my take on that though you probably have to pay a little more for it too obviously um you decided to get the omen 17 random content congrats man I hope you enjoy it.
Yeah, I do really like the Omen 17 as a as an option. War Zone 2 is loading up. Trying to click this. Interesting. Wonder what the heck is doing this. Looks like we're gonna have to restart it again. Let's go, game developers! Woo! OLED versus IPS, that's the issue for me. Wish the 4080 G14 came with the mini LED. I'm pretty sure you can get a mini LED version of the G14. I'm not sure at what point you get the, the mini LED, though. I believe the mini LED comes with either the 4080 or 4090 version. Yay, it's working. We just only had to restart it a couple times and now we're good. All right, so we're gonna go to our graphics settings. We are at 165 Hertz, 1920 by 1200. We're gonna go to minimum quality with DLSS enabled quality on the DLSS. Textures, we're gonna to set to high. All right, we're gonna apply those settings. All right, that all looks good. They've changed the menu a little bit. It doesn't say Warzone 2, it just says War zone battle royale now. Uh, why can't I select battle royale solos? Man. It's so frustrating dealing with Warzone, changing their playlists all the time. I can't do solo mode some of the time. What? Why? Makes no sense. Okay. Todoroki says, don't get the Flow X13 4070. It's only 60 watt and its thermal throttles badly. Even the Z13 performs better than it. Um, well, it all depends on how small of a system you really want. The Flow X13 is a little smaller. It does have a touch pad interface. It has the integrated keyboard directly into it. But yeah, I could see how only 60 watts is not going to be as good a performance. If you undervolt it, overclock it, you may still get really good performance out of it only at 60 watts, though. Like the, the G14 was almost matching performance um, with when I undervolted and overclocked it, it was getting like 65 watts and it was almost matching performance at 105 watts um, when it was undervolted and overclocked. So. Um, it's pretty insane how much you can overclock these GPUs. 
that are when you reduce the wattage. Um, it's like the overclock it becomes uh, it becomes more and more overclocking friendly the the more you drop the wattage down relatively relative to the normal curve that it's supposed to be reduced. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay, we're in a match. Awesome. I mean, just in general, I don't usually recommend the 4070. Um, the 4070 is, I think, pretty overpriced. Only Check provides a small out. boost to performance. So, I usually would recommend a 4060 system. Because it's better value for your... Uh... Oh, you can actually shoot when you're in the water. I'm actually impressed. I didn't think you could do that. Oh, you know, afterburner. I forgot to change one setting. There we go. Cool. Okay, so here we are. We're on the plane. Let's see what we get for our FPS on the plane. 111. Some pretty solid FPS on the plane, at least. So Warzone 2 being very CPU bottlenecked. Um, what's up, Mars? Uh, how's the laptop? The laptop is awesome, except for kind of a whistling sound that we've been running into. Um, with the fans, it's kind of too bad. Don't know what's going on with that. Man, I feel bad. Our buddy is... Uh... Our buddy's gonna be like, where the heck are you going? Why are you just running across a bridge? What's wrong with you? I have such a dumb teammate. Uh, <laughs> okay, so here we are. We're running across the bridge. This is the Strix G16, 4060, 1080p. Wow. The GPU is only pulling 52 watts right now. It is crazy. Um, is this person dead already? How did you die already? Oh, I see an enemy. That does not help me. I killed someone with a pistol. Sit down. That is awesome. I think this is the first time I've ever killed someone with a pistol before in this game. These are snipers, right? Like semi-auto? Um, so I gotta say, I was hoping we would get a bit more FPS than what we're getting. Our teammate went down. Let's go help him. Um, but it's very smooth. Like the gameplay is very good here. And it's very responsive as well. Okay, we just died. Another guy to our left. But let's see here. Can we fight the gulag? Can we go in the gulag? 87 FPS in that zone. But the key thing is... Our 1% lows were excellent at like 57, 58 um, for our 1% lows. So the gameplay felt very smooth, very responsive. So, and I think it's about, I think that's the right ballpark range of what we've been seeing across the board. Oh, it looks like we still have our overclock applied to the uh, afterburner as well. Though this is a CPU bound game anyway, so not really relevant.
Okay, so now we got our clock speed set to the right clock speed for um, the rest of the tests. All right, we're ready to fight someone. Let's go. Got him! Woo! Okay, so... Um, yeah, I mean, this is feeling very good in terms of gameplay, fluidity in Warzone. I kind of wish the FPS was a little bit higher, but that's where you kind of got to pay the bigger bucks and get a higher-end CPU if you want to get higher FPS. Because this is, this is CPU-bound gameplay. And because this says G-Sync and it's very responsive, it's a great game, gaming experience in Warzone. Let's move on to our next game, all right? Um, okay, so going to our game list, we have God of War is what I set up next. Let's move into God of War. Uh, Zach Hurd says, how are the temps on the Ryzen 7945HX version of this laptop? Um, so there is no G16 version, the G17 version. I'm not sure because I haven't tested that. Uh, that said, Ryzen chips in general, if you're pushing high TDPs to get the maximum performance, run hot. Um, so I have te every Ryzen laptop I've tested out of the box runs at spicy temps in games, um, at least CPU bound games. So I would expect high temps. Um, they're designed to run at that. The thing about the Ryzen is you can go ahead and run them. We're on ultra settings. Uh, you can run the Ryzen chips with. Um, you can run the Ryzen chips with reduced TDP and still get really good performance, and then you get better temps. So if you, like you could set it to like like the scar uh, the Strix G17. I don't know. You could probably set it to like a 45 watt, 60 watt max tdp or something and then you're gonna get much much better temps um okay warzone 2 had great temps god of war here we're seeing some pretty dang good temps as well 102 watts of power for the gpu 61 watts for the cpu that's very spicy um wattages coming through there but our temps on the laptop are looking phenomenal. 67 for the GPU, 73 for the CPU. We're obviously just getting started, but I don't think we're going to get much higher than that, just in general. Here we are. Let's go ahead and do a run. Here's our benchmarking run in God of War. This is definitely above average for an RTX 4060, 67 FPS. I believe like the G14 was getting uh, like 62 or something like that, 61. So 67 is nice to see. Um, 68 degrees on the GPU, 75 for the CPU. Very smooth, good gameplay. God of War is going to be fantastic on this laptop. Um, what's our next game? Cyberpunk 2077. Let's go. Uh, it's really fun getting pistol kills in CSGO. Oh, yeah. I love getting pistol kills, especially when the person that you kill has a gun and then you get to take their expensive gun that they paid for and you didn't have to pay for a gun or you bought a little cheap pistol or something like a Deagle. Um, I love that. That's so satisfying. Sonic 21 says, wonder if the inevitable 4070 Ti and 4080 Ti for laptops will come with higher VRAM. Goodness, I hope so. I hope, I hope NVIDIA's next version of the laptop GPUs and desktop GPUs all just have more VRAM because that's where the future is going. It's almost like they're doing planned obsolescence in a sense because they know that you're going to need to upgrade for more VRAM eventually and they can't get you to upgrade for other reasons anymore because their GPUs are so dang powerful now. Okay, so we are on Ray Tracing Ultra 
DLSS frame generation enabled. DLSS on quality. We're just gonna make sure this is applied because sometimes it doesn't apply. 1920 by 1200 full screen. Let's run the benchmark. All right, Randy, thanks so much for stopping by and thanks so much for the financial support, man. The super chats were awesome. Much appreciated. I'll help pay for dinner tonight. Anyway, all right. 84 FPS, 73 for a 1% low. Wow, that's really good for a 1% low. Um, just in general, some of the 4060s out there chug. Even at 1080p resolution, I don't know. All right, so 82 FPS, 70 for a 1% low, 83 now, 58 watts for the CPU, 100 watts for the GPU. This laptop is kick and tail in this Cyberpunk benchmark. Um, I mean, this is going to be a great gaming experience in Cyberpunk 2077 with ray tracing on ultra settings. I mean, geez, that 1% low is one of the highest 1% lows I think I've ever seen in Cyberpunk um, for a 4060 for sure. Even higher than many of the more expensive, bigger laptops. Um, okay, that is 87 0.28 FPS. So 87 FPS for our average FPS. Wow. That's great. Um, phenomenal. Seriously. That's really good. Um, okay. Next game. Hogwarts. Let's go cast some spells. Um, Adi Tama says, Hey, could you tell me if the G16 is worth getting with a QHD screen or full HD screen? Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. I think I know what's going on here. I think I've got it figured out. It was in here, and now it's not, and that's the problem. Let's go... Properties. Oh, okay. Yeah, um... We're gonna do that, and then we're going to... We may not be able to do Hogwarts uh, as well, because I had these... The Hogwarts and Apex Legends, I had... What I did was I uninstalled them from our drive, because I had them installed on my external drive, which is plugged in, but I initially installed them on the local drive, but then I ran out of juice or ran out of local space. So that's why it thinks that they're installed, but they're not installed. And that's why it's not working right now. Yeah. Um, okay. If I were to say exit steam, Unplug this, plug it back in. Reopen Steam. Maybe it'll find the files that are on the external drive. 
It might not, though. So... Anyone played Bro Tato? If this update is not too big, I would still consider doing it, but it needs to be less than five minutes for me to consider it. Um, okay, Zach says, what laptop would you recommend? I'm trying to get, trying to game and push FPS past 120. My budget is $2,000-ish. Okay, so... Uh, let's see here. Okay, it's estimating five minutes to download. Weeby, that is downloading fast. Okay, well, it says it's only a minute to finish. I don't think that's going to be right. Oh, now it's only doing one point. Okay, so we're going to try to let that go. I'm going to go ahead and show you. Um, $2,000, what are the laptops are right around that price point I'd recommend. So the, the best way to find the laptops I recommend the most at that moment is to check out my top deals section over here on my laptop list down on down below. Okay. So, uh, check out the, in terms of most graphical performance for $2,000 is probably the MSI vector. 68. All right. You get the i9-12900H. So you get an i9 processor with this. It's 2057 bucks. You get an RTX 4080, 16 gigs of DDR5, one terabyte PCIe SSD. The problem is the big weakness for this is the display. The display is definitely not as nice. It's a 16 by 10 full HD display. So it's a 16 inch display, so, um, but it's only 45% NTSC, which is very minimal. Um, it's, it's not a huge, um, yeah, it's not a very high color gamut. I don't think it'll be very bright. It's probably only gonna be like 250 nits brightness or something like that. But the laptop itself will put out the most performance, I think, for any laptop around the $2,000 price point by far. Um, that said, if you can swing a little bit higher and you want more performance, then I recommend going for either a full HD 360 Hertz display with the Aura 17H. This should be a higher quality display. Um, and this is going to be a ton of graphics cool performance. And like I said, better color gamut display, probably a hundred percent sRGB display. Basically the Omen 17, if you want a QHD, $2,200 as well. And this thing is a monster for the money. And then the Legion Pro 7i, also a monster for the money. A little bit more even, even further on the price, though. So the most performance per dollar, though, is this probably, the, probably this Vector GP68 with a 4080 in terms of graphics power per dollar, right? So around $2,000 at least. So there you go. That's my recommendation to you. All right. It's saying Hogwarts is going to be 10 minutes. Uh, maybe it'll finish up while we test some of these other games. Uh, moving on to Dead Space. It shouldn't download while it's in the background, so. Uh, but I will make sure it's pausing it when we're in the background here before we move into benchmarks. Uh, Addy Thomas says, uh, tell me if this is worth getting a QHD screen or a full HD screen. So I kind of talked about this a little bit earlier. The big thing about the QHD screen, if you get the G16, you're getting a much brighter nits brightness display and at the same time, a higher color gamut and resolution. So it's like a triple upgrade. It's an upgrade of multifaceted. It's going to a QHD Nebula 500 nits display. All right. Um, that said, going to QHD display with only a 4070 or weaker is not ideal, I don't think, because of the VRAM limitations. So you're going to have to be willing to tweak the settings in a lot of games if you go up to that higher resolution. So if you go to that higher resolution, if you go to the QHD resolution with the G16, I recommend also buying the 4080 version if you can, if you can swing the money. 
Um, otherwise, I think just sticking to the full HD version is perfectly viable and a good idea. Um, because then you're going to be able to basically run everything on ultra settings and almost never have to fiddle with settings and you just have a great time. Um, less hassle. Unless you're a more advanced user and you're okay with fiddling with settings, then that's fine too. Um, okay. Here we are. We're in dead space. Let me make sure that it is paused on the download. It is paused on the download. Good. All right. So, right here in UGS Shimuria, this is the initial starting scene. 81 FPS, 39 for 1 percent low. That's very good. 71 watts of power to the CPU. That's a very high amount of wattage going to the CPU. 83 to the GPU. We are GPU limited at 100%, so that means the CPU is pushing enough frames that we're not being CPU bound in this scenario. Um, all right, so here we are, we're coming out. Very nice. 81 FPS for our average, 32 for our 1% low. The game's looking great. It's feeling good. Um, and our temperatures are not bad. We're in the 79 degrees on the CPU, 80 on the CPU. That's the highest I've seen is 80 right now. 65 degrees on the GPU. Phenomenal thermal cooling solution in this laptop. I'm really impressed with the thermals on the, G, uh, on the Strix G16. Uh, I mean, this laptop was really designed for a 4080 or 4090 in it, and it only has a 4060, and it's just killing it. You know, it's designed for an i9 CPU that can pull even higher wattages, so it's no problem when it only pulls 80 watts. You know, most most laptops are going to get super overheated pushing 80 watts through the CPU. Asus did a great job in this laptop. All right, 86 for our FPS average so far, 33 for our 1% low. We're getting a little bit of a little bit of lower frames, but that's typical in dead space. We're going to go ahead and see what we get on our walk back to the ship. This is our benchmark run for Dead Space, where I always do the same area of every game. 82 FPS for our average so far. Our, our boost clock up here at 2550 is maintaining rock solid steady, which is great to see. 90 watts for our GPU, 83 for our GPU, 70 watts for our CPU, 4.4 gigahertz. This is going to be an awesome gaming laptop. Again, ultra settings, right? We're on ultra settings. Um, boom. 86 FPS, 33 for a 1% low. Very nice. All right. Um, yeah, I don't know if Hogwarts is going to happen or not. Uh, let's see here. What's our next game that we need to check out? Uh, Last of Us Part One. Oh, it's also not... Yeah, I think Last of Us was also one that I had removed, so that sucks. Um, all right, we've got Dying Light 2. This one sh should work. Fingers crossed. Dying Light 2, let's go. What laptop would you recommend if you were trying to push high FPS? What, what game are you trying to play, Zach? Are you trying to play eSports games? If you're trying to play eSports games, what you want to focus on is probably full HD instead of QHD or at least getting a QHD 240 hertz display. And then you want to focus on getting a highest-end CPU with the highest-end GPU, basically. So a high refresh rate and then the fastest CPU you can afford and the fastest GPU, but I would prioritize CPU over GPU if you're trying to prioritize FPS in eSports. If you're trying to prioritize FPS in AAA titles like Dying Light 2 or a similar, 
Then what you're going to want to get is um, focus on getting a better GPU and a lower end CPU. You can save money on your CPU if you're doing mainly um, AAA titles. And then if you really want to push above 120 FPS as much as possible, especially in AAA titles, you're going to want to get an RTX 4000 series because of frame generation. Frame generation really can boost the FPS you get in these newer games and in a lot of future games, dramatically making it a much better overall experience. So, Dying Light 2 is ready to go. We're on high quality ray tracing settings. Frame generation is enabled with DLSS on quality. Uh, Addy Thomas says, is an i9-13980HX 4070 QHD, 2300 pounds. I would say that it's much better if you can to get a 4080 GPU for 2300 pounds. Because I just went over several options there uh, a couple minutes ago that had 4080s right around 2300 pounds, and, or 2300 US dollars at least. Um, you know, and like a 4080 GPU realistically is like 60% faster than a 4070. Okay. It is a huge jump in performance going from a 4070 to 4080. And if there's any way you can swing to a 4080, it's going to be super worth it, um, for future proofing, for the increased VRAM, for the increased graphical throughput, like the the time spy of a 4070 is like 12, 13,000 in that range. The time spy for a 4080 is like 18 to 19,000. That's a huge jump, like a 50, 60% jump in performance. Um, and then the VRAM increase from 8 gigs to 12 gigs will also make it much more future proof for QHD resolution gaming because uh, 4070s only come with 8 gigs of VRAM, which makes them almost. Uh, essentially, you're going to have to start downplaying your texture settings right now in all the latest games or a lot of the latest games. So that's why I'm thinking like a 4080 is just a so much better purchase. at twenty. If you're going to spend 2300 if there's any way you can get a 4080 version instead, it's even worth it, I would say, to save up $500 more and wait a month to buy it if you can get a 4080 version instead as well. Um Am I missing something? Is the G14 with a 4090 mini LED the perfect laptop? I mean, pretty much. It's, it, it is an incredible laptop as long as you are willing to tweak your graphical settings. All right, so 109 FPS in Dying Light 2. Frame generation, of course, is enabled, so we have AI-generated frames. Um, that's awesome to see. Our 1% low, I didn't get to see what our 1% low was. Let's see what that was. I'm going to check my, I'm going to do the instant replay check. Uh, oh, 1% low does not matter in this. Min, F, min FPS was 93. So, because the, the afterburner 1% low is all messed up, switching between different things. Extremely playable, very high frame rate. 103 is just insane. Okay, uh, we're going to have to switch up. We're going to add Elden Ring into our test because... Two of the games that we were going to play today, three of the games we were going to play today, were not installed correctly anymore. So this is what we're going to have to do. So Elden Ring is going to be a new, random new game today. Woo! Uh, let's see what FPS we get. I think it's going to be 60 because we're probably going to hit our max FPS limit, which is 60. Uh, but we'll find out. We'll try to see if we can at least hit the max FPS cap of 60. Uh, thank you very much. God bless. No problem, man. Uh, Shadow we pretty much, yeah. I heard some people change the V BIOS on the G fourteen forty nine and gave one hundred seventy five watt, which is crazy. Uh, Shadow, yeah, you can do that maybe for a very short period of time, and then you're just gonna thermal throttle nonstop because it can't. It thermal throttles at one hundred twenty five watts. It's not gonna, it's not gonna survive very long doing one hundred seventy five watts. You might be able to get through a uh, like a time spy benchmark run though, and just put out a cool number, you know bust the 20k mark or something but in general the g14 actually i think thrives when you uh run it with an undervolt so that way you can get even better fps and better performance at better temperatures and lower fan noise too um
I just clicked new game on accident instead of system. Let's go back. We'll just click continue for now. It's like at some lower resolution because of the ally testing that I did. Uh, yeah, the 4090 will run cooler, but it's not going to run cool enough to run 175 watts for sure. All right. Yeah. Definitely not going to happen. All right. So we are on um, maximum settings in Elden Ring. We're going to change our resolution to the correct resolution. There we go. Ray tracing, maximum. Wait, did it say we had to restart the game? To apply these settings, return to the title menu. Okay, so we gotta go back to the main menu. We're gonna have to restart and go back to the main menu and then go back into the game or let it load back in in order to have ray tracing be active during the test. Uh, Ison Namvar says, I got this laptop about a month ago and it's awesome in performance and temperature as you've mentioned before. Yes. Okay, so, whoa. Whoa, we are actually not hitting 60 FPS. Super interesting, but also kind of cool that we're seeing real benchmark numbers. Um, wow. Interesting. I mean, it's very smooth. The gameplay is good. It's not as smooth as 60 FPS would be, though. Um, you know, we've got... Ray tracing set to maximum. What if we just put ray tracing to high? Let's see when we put ray tracing to high. 45 FPS, I would rather have 60, you know? like Whatever setting I need to set to get 60 FPS on this, that's what I would go for. GPU wattage seems low. Yes. Um, yeah, it, the, the GPU wattage was low. It seems like it's not pushing the GPU that hard. Um, it's like something else is, is bottlenecking us. Because like right now, only 67 watts. We're at 2560. We're, we're at 99% GPU utilization, um, which makes this whole thing really weird. It's like we're being like GPU or memory bound or maybe something inside the GPU because we're doing ray tracing. Maybe the ray tracing cores, RT cores or whatever inside the GPU are being maxed and it's becoming a bottleneck for us. But I mean, 54 FPS, that's, that's quite a bit better than 45 in terms of visual smoothness to my eyes. Not like huge difference, but I mean, it's, it was smooth enough to be playable either way. Oh, was ray tracing didn't change? No, ray tracing did change. Okay, let's go. We'll try ray tracing on medium and see if we can get straight 60 on medium. Probably can. But, I mean, Elden Ring is one of those games where it's, they have this absurd 60 FPS cap to the game. So, look at us. Okay, now we're doing 60. Well, we were doing 60. If we look, at, over, if we look this way, we're doing 60. If we look this way, we're doing 52, 57, 52, 51, 54 on average. Our 1% low is 47. I think just ray tracing in general is probably causing this.
All right, we're gonna turn ray tracing off and just make sure that we can get 60 at least. Um, but I'm pretty sure uh, ray tracing tends to be very CPU heavy as well. So that might be the thing that's causing us to be capped. I gotta say, this thing loads so fast. We've gone in and out of the whole game like five times and it only takes like 15 seconds, it seems like. Uh, your PC Prime says, hey man, great work. Question, when, when you'll be testing the Tough series, I think they make more sense to buy with the price of the 4000 series laptops. That's a great question. Um, I'd love to do some tests on them sometime soon here. Okay, so now we're doing 60 FPS nonstop. I gotta say the ray tracing, actually, I think the ray tracing mode made things look better on the screen though. I'd probably play with ray tracing on high or something than in that scenario. I don't know. Um, I have to take a screenshot and compare, but it just seems like, like everything seems a bit anti alias -y now, like a little bit not sharp. Oh crap. All right, we're gonna fight this guy and die and then we're gonna. Kabam, he got me. Okay, so 60 FPS nonstop, easy without ray tracing enabled. Throw ray tracing on, then you're still doing 45 on ray tracing maximum. Um, so still playable. But it's not, it's not as high as what a lot of people would love to see, I think, given the fact that it's an older game. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, let's hop into it. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a game that has ray tracing. It has DLSS. It does not have frame generation. So we're running everything on highest settings with ray tracing on ultra. With DLSS on quality. Let's hop into it. The temps are pretty dang good. Yeah, the temps on this is insane. Turbo fan profiles on Asus allows the laptop to have more GPU watts. Uh, well, we did that test earlier and uh, manual mode was, I, that may be true in certain laptops and that used to be true in the past. I don't think that's true anymore on a, on a laptop like this. Um, simply because it's so easy to hit the maximum TDP of 105 to 110 that, that uh, I mean, we're hitting that, we're going to hit that TDP no matter what. All right. So Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 115 FPS in this initial start here. Ultra settings, ray tracing on ultra, DLSS on quality. 1920 by 1200 resolution. So 63 degrees on that GPU, 66 on the CPU. 92 watts going through that GPU. We're not maxing the wattage on the GPU. This is a fairly CPU heavy game, um, admittedly, on the, when you're doing the CPU, like when it's at 1080p or basically full HD resolutions, it tends to be very CPU heavy. You need to have a good CPU to push high frames in this game and good memory speed. So, and we have, we have good memory speed in this laptop and we have a good CPU. So we're not being CPU bound much, if at all, in this game, partially because we're only doing with a 4060. If we had like a 4080 or 4090 with the CPU, then we'd be CPU bound, I think. But, uh, but yeah. Zach Hurd says, I think I'm going to save and get the 4080 G18 version of this laptop. That's a great option. I do like the Strix G18. Um, I have one right over there, actually. I suppose this is still true in the SCAR 16 4080 or 4090. Isn't the max 140 watts? Uh, yeah, so the max with all of most of the 4060s theoretically is 140 watts, but you never see it in actual gameplay. You see only about 105 to 110 on the high end and in CPU centric games, like games that need a lot of CPU juice. Like this one, we're pulling 60 watts on the CPU. Look at our wattages. We're only doing like 90 to 100 watts, almost never busting the 100 watt mark. 
There's 109 watts we saw for a moment, but most of the time we've been in mid 90s, low 100s. Um, and I mean, this section I think is a little bit less CPU heavy, so we can push the GPU wattage a little bit higher in certain parts, but it's just gonna depend on the game. Um, and when you turn that ray tracing on, it does, it does tax the CPU more, which is gonna make it a little harder to boost the GPU as high on the wattage. That said, this laptop should be able to boost the GPU up to like max possible wattage, no matter what. Um, because, but it, I don't know, it's probably just <sighs> the way I would describe it is a lot of laptop manufacturers artificially limit their GPU wattage when the CPU is under load. And in this system, you, you clearly don't need to do that because we should be able to pull the 110 maximum wattage, even if the CPU is pulling 60 easily, but they, they haven't really programmed the VBIOS to do that because probably by guidance from NVIDIA, probably not to do that. 114 FPS on average at full HD plus. Phenomenal, great performance. You're gonna love playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider with this game, uh, with this laptop. Let's move into the Witcher 3. Kelvin says, should I get an MSI Cyborg 15? I would not recommend that at the $1,000 or $1,100 price point. If it is $799, then it's not a bad option at $799 because you're actually undercutting the a lot of the other 4050, 4060 laptops for a lower price. The display on the Cyborg is not that good, and the GPU wattage on the Cyborg is also only 45 watts, which is very low. So you need to know, you need to understand that if you're gonna use a 40, uh, if you're gonna go with the Cyborg 15, you gotta expect a crappier display and only eight gigs of RAM and 45 watts of the GPU. And if you could just spend $1,000 instead, I'd recommend the Acer Nitro 5 with a 4050, 16 gigs of RAM and a better quality display. If you can spend another $100, go with the Lenovo Lock with an RTX 4060 with a much better display. Man, that is, that, that is gonna be, a way better computer than the Cyborg 15. Um, and of course, swinging all the way up to a laptop like this, I think is even better than the lock um, by a little bit, but not by much. Okay, so here we are, Witcher 3. Let's check our settings. Cause like I said, I, I was doing, all right, ray tracing on ultra. Let's turn that on. Quality DLSS, display, full HD frame generation is enabled. I have been playing through The Witcher 3 lately. I love this game. It is an incredible game. Probably one of my favorite gaming experiences I've ever had, period. Bar none. It is insane. Um, such a fun game. Let's go ahead and kill these ghouls over here. Oop, I pressed the wrong button. I'm gonna switch. We're gonna burn these guys. Okay, let's burn them with fire. Okay, so uh, all right, our one percent low. It was saying only four, but I guarantee you it's higher than that. It's sixty. It's super smooth. Um, this is a great gaming experience. It's looking great. It's playing smooth, and we're on maximum maximum settings at 1080p. All right. Um, I mean. You're not going to, visually speaking, it looks great. You could turn some settings down a little bit if you want to go to like over 100. Honestly, you just change one setting, turn off ray tracing. Let's see what we get now. Now we're doing 105, 108, okay? That's all you have to do is turn off ray tracing and then boom, it's just butter smooth. Um, 120 right now. It's so good. Uh, it's a great. It's a great gaming experience. It's a great story. The way it's a brutal story. It's a fantasy story. Um, 
but it's it's so beautifully dark and super well written. So if you're after a mature fantasy story, I highly recommend The Witcher Three. The more I play it, the more I love it. Um, the amount of effort the devs put into the game is unparalleled. There's hardly any games out there that put as much effort into this world as they did The Witcher 3. Okay, so um, here we are. Right now, we're still running. Um, no ray tracing right now. Wow, 98 FPS for a 1% low is incredible. All right. But we are going to go ahead and just set everything to max, all right? So back to turning on ray tracing. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we get. 69 FPS for our average so far. 57 for our 1% low is really great. Eighty-one FPS, sixty-one for our one percent lows. So good, I love it. Um, you're gonna love playing The Witcher Three on this laptop. It is phenomenal. Okay, so we threw in a couple extra games that we didn't get to test. Um, one other game I didn't promise that I want to do before we go is CS:GO. Let's hop into CS:GO and see what we get for our esports gaming performance. Um, and then we're going to go into a final summary of the whole live stream. Everything that's on this list, we're going to talk about it and see how this laptop did. Um, sweet. So right now it's installing DirectX. But once it gets done doing these little tasks, it's going to open. Okay, checking out... The uh, chat, SBO says, does HP or Gigabyte even make gaming laptops anymore? Yes. I actually almost got an HP Omen 16 for review. I have, I love the Omen 17 that I reviewed uh, a couple months ago. I highly recommend checking it out. If you're in the market for a high-end gaming laptop, it's a larger one that's on a little more of a budget. Um, and Gigabyte also makes laptops. Yep, they do. And they make the Aorus lineup as well as the, the Gigabyte G5 and G7 lineups. Um, so yeah, they're making a bunch of different laptops, both of those companies. Um, a thin and light laptop with a 4060 would be better than a Cyborg 15 due to much better screen, USB-C power delivery. Both laptops aren't able, aren't able to get up to high FPS anyway. Uh, Zach says, do you have any recommendations on thermal pads? Um, I would say that it's not going to matter that much. Um, but the biggest thing is probably the thickness of the thermal pad and just look at reviews for individual thermal pads before you buy it. Make sure that you match the thickness that you need so that you don't apply pressure to the chassis or bend your SSD if you're going to put thermal pads anywhere. What's up, Sharky? Why does The Witcher 3 look so bad in the screen? Um, I'm not sure. Are you, thinking, are you talking about like this little like glowy thing? That's a thing from the camera lens and the staccato or something i don't know uh, but i don't know why you're saying it didn't look good that's weird i don't know it seemed to be looking good on when i was looking at it let me see yeah, i mean it's looking good to me But maybe there was some setting that was different. I don't know. I'd have to double check. Okay, here we are. CSGO. Let's check our settings. Everything is set too high. We're going to leave it on a high school full screen window. We'll apply full screen. 1920 by 1200 default high settings. Let's go into the benchmark. 
And we also need to turn on uh, net graph three. Uh, do you, Frank, uh, Farouk, do you have anything in particular that you're talking about when you're talking about the, uh, the image quality? I don't know. Maybe like just like the exposure of the camera was off or something. I don't know. Okay, so 500 FPS, 400 FPS. We're looking at the FPS chart down here. Um, 500... 400, 500, it's bouncing right around the 500 mark, 520 mark. This thing is killing it in CSGO. 400, 300. Very nice. Do you play Roblox? I do not, I'm sorry. Uh, Eshan says, I got average 60 FPS at Hogwarts at 1200p resolution, ultra settings, RTX on, DLS on, frame gen on. It's playable, but it stutters a lot. Um, yeah, you want to turn down... S S on, if you want it to be smoother, what you need to do is turn textures down to low because what you're looking at is probably being... Um, your VRAM ran out, and it's stuttering because of the VRAM. So just turn your textures to low, and I think you're probably going to get um, way less stutters. Okay, inside of the smoke, let's see how low we go. All the way down to about 75. That's actually really good in smoke. Wow. Nice. Uh, I think it was all red looking for The Witcher 3, but some parts look normal. Um, I think that's just, yeah, I don't, I don't, I think that's just The Witcher 3's um, color spectrum. It's very kind of reddish in certain environments. It was so much shadows and red light. Yeah, there was like a sun, it was like a sunset in the background, making everything look red, like a red hue. The lighting in that game is awesome. Um, and that's part of what makes it awesome. So, Let's see what we get for our 1%, our, our average, 431 for our average in CSGO. Uh, 431.29, very good, obviously. Let's hop into an actual match here on Dust2. And try to kill someone real quick. LSP, I guess a 488490 will allow multiple emulators to run at the same time as Doom internal settings. LSP, you're so funny because you're always talking about emulators all the time and everyone's like, who cares about emulators? But I'm sure some people out there do. Oh my God, someone's making... Uh, okay. That looked like, was that guy hacking? I don't know. All right, so right here on Dust2, we're doing 300, 400 FPS. Am I not allowed to buy anything? Guess we'll go with a Tech9. And we'll hope one of our teammates dies and then we can take their stuff. Uh, this is feeling incredibly smooth. All right, we got a FAMAS. We got one kill. Man, I spent hundreds of hours on this map. I played this game so much. Um, like, I played hours and hours and hours of this game. Okay, so 200, 300 FPS, 200 FPS. You're going to hit the 165 hertz refresh rate pretty much all the time in CSGO. And maybe except for when you're in smokes. Can't wait for Counter-Strike 2. It's going to be awesome. Okay, let's go. Summary time. Everything about this laptop. What do we got? All right. So. Shwam. Can I get the lighting up? There we go. All right. So unboxing this laptop, the unboxing experience is pretty nice. It's got a uh, pretty classy box. It comes 
with an accidental protection for a one year. I love that. Uh, one year international warranty coverage. That's pretty sweet. Um, the laptop power adapter is pretty long, about 10 feet long, but the I wish I wish the cable from the power adapter to the laptop was a little bit longer. The quality control on the laptop was excellent. Super firm, rigid chassis, higher quality materials on the, mater the laptop itself. It feels like a more expensive laptop than $1,329. Better than almost all laptops under $1,500, okay? Um, the keyboard feels good. The RGB backlighting could be better. Um, the, tr the trackpad is glass. It feels very good. Premium trackpad. I had no problems with the trackpad or the keyboard, aside from the keyboard backlighting not being as good as I would love. The RGB on this thing is awesome. It's a great RGB experience. If you're after something that has bright, vibrant lights on it, um, it's better RGB than almost everything around this price point. Okay, basically almost everything, everything almost. Almost all the other laptops around this price point cut RGB out because it's too uh, too much, for too much cost to add to the price of the laptop. And then they end up having to jack the price of the whole laptop up, which is not good. So I'm amazed that Asus was able to offer this laptop at the price that we're seeing it today, all right? Uh, our display test did 270, uh, 287 nits brightness, but for some reason, the display on this laptop is not changing brightness up and down. It's just that for some, like sometimes it does that, some update is gonna come through and probably fix it from Asus at some point in the near future. It's not that big a deal, but just know that our display test may not be perfectly accurate. Now we got 100% sRGB, about 80% Adobe and P3 color gamut, which is very good. It's a very good display. Um, the contrast ratio 1100 is also very good. Very enjoyable, no ghosting in esports games, CSGO or Warzone. Both of those games ran really, really well. With fan noise testing, we had 46 decibels um, for the performance mode. We basically were completely quiet in silent mode down to like 43, 44, 45, right around the base level of the decibels of the room ambient noise. And that's really, really good. And performance mode and silent mode are still gonna be enough performance to play a lot of games, especially lighter weight games. If you tweak the settings down just a little bit, you're gonna be able to play on like medium high settings in completely silent mode with the speakers on this that are really good, very immersive speakers. I was very impressed with the, the volume of the speakers as well as the bass and the clarity in the mids and highs for the money. This is probably the best set of speakers I've ever tested under $1,400, um, probably. I think, I mean, unless you're buying like a used laptop, like the speakers in this are basically what you're gonna be getting in most laptops about $2,500, okay? Um, so speakers are really awesome. The fan noise, very impressive, but it does get very loud when you're in max fans and turbo fans, turbo fans was about 52, 53 decibels. Max fans was about 57 and a half decibels, very loud. Um, Apex Legends, we did not get to run that. Call of Duty Warzone 2, we were getting like 80, seven to 90 FPS, 1% low was at like 60 to 70 FPS. Very good, very smooth, very good gameplay. Um, excellent overall gaming experience. If you want more FPS, you're gonna have to spend more money though on more powerful components because uh, that's about what we get maximum in this level of hardware. God of War, excellent gaming performance, 67 FPS. Um, I'm trying to remember these numbers off the top of my head, but our 1% low was also excellent. Great gaming experience in God of War. Cyberpunk 2077, I think we had 87 FPS. That's phenomenal. Ultra settings maxed out on all of these games, by the way, except for Warzone, Warzone on the lower side. Um, Hogwarts, we didn't get to run that, but we got to run Elden Ring, which we were able to get 60 FPS on max settings. With ray tracing enabled, we were getting like 45, 47 FPS, and then as reduced ray tracing down, we were able to get more and more. So definitely 60 FPS, which is the frame cap for Elden Ring is entirely possible. Dead Space, we got 87, I believe, FPS. At, yeah, in our test, 86, 87. Very good performance, perfectly playable, ultra settings. Last of Us Part 1, we weren't able to run that. Dying Light 2, phenomenal FPS, um, over 100. I think it was 109. Just you're going to have a great experience in Dying Light 2. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 114 FPS. That's phenomenal. Witcher 3, um, we were getting around 81, 82 in my typical test, but we were able to tweak the settings down a little bit. And then we were getting like over a hundred just by disabling ray tracing, that one setting, disabling ray tracing over a hundred FPS. Um, man, overall, 
this laptop, the biggest flaw with it that I had was the whistling sound that was coming from the bottom of the laptop. Um, one of the viewers was saying that he it made it sound like it was a bumblebee inside the chassis of the laptop. That's kind of what it sounded like. A little bit of like, not a bzzz, but like more like a the way insect wings sound almost is the way I would describe it. And it, it uh, like a, a, a kind of like just, it was not, it was distracting and it was not as prevalent when we were in performance or turbo mode. And this laptop, because it was designed to run RTX 4080 and 4090s in the thermal cooling solution that this has, you can easily get basically max performance in performance mode where the fans are super quiet and you're not gonna hear that. Now, I did not hear any coil whine on this unit while we tested it today, and I was paying attention and looking for it at multiple points. But the whistling of, I, th I, I think what's happening is either um, there's a whistling coming from the fans on the inside with the air moving through the chassis or on one of the intakes or outtakes. It's just causing a fan, and I would just try, if, if this was my laptop, I would try to zero in on what's causing it and then just try to make whatever gap is doing the whistling a little bit wider with like a screwdriver or like a little tiny drill or something or a little scalpel tool, and that would probably fix the whistling, okay? That's what I would try to do to troubleshoot that. Overall, the whistling can just be fixed by switching to performance mode or running your manual fans with lower fan speeds, and you're still gonna get great temps and great performance can I recommend this laptop? Absolutely, freaking lutely it's phenomenal. The webcam on this, by the way, was pretty terrible. That was something I forgot to put on the list. I need to add it to the list. Anyway, that's it for my unboxing review of the Strix G16. Let's take some questions and then we'll end the live stream. Okay, all right. Um, Sharky says, your PC in the back, it's gonna cost me 43,000 czar. Um, gotcha. Cool. For some reason, the GPU, I think, went out on my desktop. I haven't troubleshooted it yet, but last night when I was trying to use the monitor, it just would not put display output to the monitor. So the CyberPower PC may have failed me. Anyway, just a heads up. I like the GP, the GPU fans are no longer spinning. So it could be that the GPU is no longer being powered. So it could be just a power cable. Um, I know that the power cables were going out on the 4090s. So that could be the, the problem there. Um, this or the Lenovo lock? That's a great question. I think if you're after RGB, if you're after better quality speakers, if you're after um, arguably a better quality display, but maybe not, I don't know. There's a lot of trade-offs between this and the lock and it's gonna largely come down to spec differences, but I think they're ultimately both gonna be great laptops. Um, they're both gonna be great laptops. And I think that you can't really go wrong with either one necessarily. I think there's a lot of design differences and you're getting some more premium features with the Strix G16 than the lock, right? If, if you compare this with the, the lock, which I did compare this with the lock at the beginning um, of the stream. So the Lenovo lock has almost no RGB, right? It's a super basic laptop, comes with a Ryzen processor instead, um, good RAM, good SSD size and costs less. If you're after saving money, that's probably the way to go. This is only supposed to be 45% NTSC, which is much lower color gamut display. So if you want a better display though, you're going to get a faster refresh rate with the Strix G16 and the display quality is going to be noticeably better. And it's only going to be like $170 more, $180 more. I feel like between those two, I would go with the Strix G16. Plus the G16 has Liquid metal, cooling, really awesome thermals. I mean, good speakers, probably almost for sure better speakers than the lock. I have not tested the lock speakers. I do want to review this Lenovo lock very soon. So be expecting this review at some point in the near future. Looks like they might have a little bit of RGB on the back there. Um, I, the ports might be better on the lock and the keyboard might be better on the lock. And the price is probably better on the lock. But other than that, I feel like the Strix G16 is the more premium option for only a little bit more money and probably worth it. I don't know. I feel like it's probably worth it going with the Strix G16 over the lock. Um, but that's gonna be a very personal choice. Okay. Uh, LSP, thanks Gizmo. Your laptop recommendations helped me buy this laptop I wanted. Sweet. Or help me buy the laptop I want during the end of your sale. 
Ferguk says, do you have any chance to review those Asus laptops, the Vivo Book Pro 4060 OLED ones? Um, I don't think I'll do the Vivo Book. Maybe the Zen Book OLED. We'll see. Uh, Wheat Food says, for me, the biggest problem was that the buttons on it, like brightness or something else, wouldn't work since I have one too. Um, interesting. So they just got to have a driver update to fix those, um, the brightness changes. KSK, I wonder why my G16 CPU is throttling or so on overforming on turbo and manual. Do you believe that might be a thermal paste issue or because of performance on the CPU scores uh, on the best Cinematic 23? Uh, KSK, that's you need to do actual testing with a monitoring tool so you can see what your temperatures are. Um, you need to know what what fan profile you're in. If you're in like silent or performance mode, your CPU performance is going to be way down. You need to at least be in turbo or manual mode if you want your CPU to perform well. Um, and then if you are thermal throttling, then it might be a bad pace job um, or it might be some driver issue. Make sure you're all, all your drivers are up to date and everything like you would on every laptop. Um, but that's probably the, I think that's probably the biggest thing I would say. Um, yeah, I think the Strix G16 is gonna be a winner for most people. Another downside to this I would say is it's a bit thicker than the more portable options like the Zephyrus G16. And the G16 also has Windows Hello. There's no Windows Hello on this guy. So that's another kind of con, but not very many laptops right at this price point have Windows Hello anyway. But the Zephyrus G16 for $14.49, maybe you can get it on sale, maybe not. That thing has Windows Hello and it has almost the same performance, basically the same performance as this and similar levels of premium things, and it's it's thinner. Now, the temperatures on the Zephyrus G6, the Zephyrus G16, they are not as good as the thermals as this. This thermal, thermally is, this is amazing thermals. But the Zephyrus G16 still has good thermals. And, and the Zephyrus G16 is just more portable. And so, yeah, that's why I would say, Someone who wants something more portable, the Zephyrus G16 is still a great option, even at $1449. This thing, though, is better all around in terms of, I think, it's thermals and the RGB design. So if you're something like, if you're looking for something more gamery and still somewhat portable and you don't mind it being like a little bit heavier or a little bit bigger, then the G16 is probably the way to go instead. Okay. Um, Ferg says, the way you review laptops are, is really different than other channels. It feels more natural. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. I'm glad it feels natural. What gaming PC would I recommend? Um, all depends on your price, your availability, your market. USA markets are going to be vastly different than uh, your market. You, you were paying in some other foreign currency. I'm not sure what. Um, so it's hard for me to recommend. The biggest thing is just get quality components in whatever PC uh, that you get. So... That's probably the biggest thing, but it's hard to go wrong. Zephyrus has a better display than this one. No, it's the same display. It's a full HD plus 1920 by 100% uh, sRGB, 165 hertz refresh rate. Same display, um, but it costs a little bit more. So it's nice that this one's on sale. The G16 is on sale. Gives a little more bang for the buck, I think, than the Zephyrus G16. So, okay. We're going to end the live stream here. I need to go to dinner uh, with my fiance, Carla. We've got dinner plans. I hope you enjoyed the live stream. I hope this was helpful to everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like the live stream, and I'll see you in the next one. Brandon.